Welcome to Wednesday. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew and another edition. And uh, this is where we play new games on classic consoles. So welcome everybody. <laughs> welcome to you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here again. In uh, this is the lockdown edition. <laughs> the where we lockdown have edition. The same hosts every single every time. Week, yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine for now. Yep. Yeah. Hi, uh, Mr. Fix. Hi, Packrat. Hello. Um, and we are broadcasting at 60 frames a second, so make mm -hmm. sure you set it to 60 or things go crazy on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, things stray because they don't, uh, don't seem to know how to handle uh, changing 60 to 30 yet for some reason. They'll get it one day. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dan, as well. Hey, Dan. Uh, we're going to be playing five games today. Five? Uh, oh, three small ones. Okay. Uh, three small ones, one not a game. And, okay. <laughs> uh, and and one we're going to be playing for a patch, brand new patch. Okay, so four was... games and one not a game. Yes, okay. four games and one not a game. <laughs> and three of the games are by Atari Twenty Six Hundred Land. They're very oh. very prolific. Okay. Um, very simplistic games, um, but very prolific guy. Mm. Um, the three games made by him are Jack of the Beanstalk, Super Mario Sisters, and Super Mario Sisters Two. Mm. And we're going to be taking a look at a proof of concept that was made by Daryl Spice Jr. of uh, Cosmic Avenger, the arcade game. Okay, yeah. And we're also going to be playing for the patch for Spaceman Splorf Planet of Doom, Ooh. a game that came out last year and a game that was sent to me last week mm. by Pack Rat Video Games, who is in very the chat nice. right now. Yeah. So thank you very much, David. And uh, which affords us to be able to play the game on the show and mm. vie for the patch. Nice. Um, and this game was made by Andreas Gustafsson, mm -hmm. a.k.a. SDW and Vanier Utne. Um, so I want to thank uh, the Twitch subscribers who support the show and their names are Cafe Man 2D, Captain Classic, Charles Reese, Dianoy, Dan AVC, Drexel Gretams, Johnny WC23, Carl G, Croco 2600, Laud Mott, Mad Max 2069, Metal Lunar 7, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, Nathan Strum, Packrat VG, RC70, Repentless VG, Retro Salary Man, Sir Cat Lake, Spartan 581, Spiceware, Astro Mirrors 2008, The D Train 37, The Welshman 89, Thunkus, Tiki Dan K, Trek MD, and Venjack. Quite a list of names. Thank you so much. And you can too support the show if you have Twitch Prime, link it to your, uh, not Twitch Prime, Amazon Prime, and link it to your Twitch Prime and uh, click subscribe. Mm -hmm. Make sure to follow and subscribe and click on all the things on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I want to thank everybody joining us live on Twitch. And there, see, it works. Ground yeah. Trooper just subscribed. Woo. 18 months. Oh my God. Wow. He's. Definitely must have a first in front of his name. Uh, he hasn't said know. anything, but I'm sure he does, because 18 yeah. months is a long time. It is a long time. Must That's be one of the cool. first ten, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, so, Carl G., welcome. Hello. Uh, Ground Trooper as well, who just resubscribed. Thank you very much. Yeah. Dan AVC, Mr. Fix, Pack Rat VG, the person in question we were just talking about, who donated the game. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um styles gaming mm -hmm. as well spartan 581 nice. who always uh from wishes from you want to take that uh who always wishes us well right off the top of the show and i thank you for that and i uh he says hope everyone is well and wishing you a great show and i hope everybody is well out there and staying safe and uh ground trooper says mr fix has me beat by two months i think yeah mr fix was an early early person yeah mr fix has a first against their name 20 months 20 oh my god yep just have to hover um so in the mail news and feedback new art in the background well it's old art we took it down for two shows um because i put up my poster from my movie so this is come back up again um and i had it up there before looks like, like it's at quite an angle. I don't know why, but it looks like it's quite an angle. Oh, Ground Troop, no, your first badge is still there beside your name. Maybe when you're typing, you can't see it, but I can see it. It says founder, 18 month subscriber, Ground Trooper. So you still have it. You still have it. Don't worry. Um, the 2020 Harmony Games, it's going into round two. And just to follow up, because we played Zookeeper um, last episode, was it? 
And so we wanted to get in the scores because I believe the last scores were on the 7th. And um, I got a score of 395,950 to come in first place. So I got 10 points for the first round. Erlen came in second uh, with 129,850. So he got uh, nine points for round one. And Tanya came in third. Wow, did very well in our group of people here at Zero Page Homebrew with 75,750 with eight points. Arena Foot in fourth with 23,890. And Dan Iacovelli, got to get that right, uh, with 10,270 points uh, 200, uh, for six points. So there's the top five people. And Dan has announced, hey, Spiceware, welcome. Dan has announced round two, which is going to be Aardvark. And since we'll be playing on the demo version of Aardvark, um, they're going to, he's arranged it a little bit differently. Scores will only be accepted after you pass hill one. So you have to make it past hill one, but the scores cut off at hill five. So the score on hill five at the end of hill five, the, uh, end score screen, that's the score that's going to be taken. If you make it to hill six, doesn't matter how you have to submit the score at the end of hill five. So there's going to be a lot of optimization of scores and pushing the limits of each level. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to slot those, <coughs> slot that in. I don't know if the dates have been announced for that yet, but I'm going to slot those in um, so I can play it right away and then play it right before the uh, round is over. Because that's what I tend to do. Put in a score so I have something up there and then put one in at the end because then I know what up I'm up against and I know I, how much I have to play. Uh, welcome Metal Lunar as well. Welcome Gretums. Welcome everybody. And Metal Lunar uh, paid 100 bubbles to highlight his message. Why not? Oh, and 06502 has joined us as well. Lots of people popping in. Um, and I wanted to wait till Tanya is back, but she has disappeared to take an important phone call. Uh, might as well get into it. Um, also announced just one hour ago from Champ Games is one of his upcoming new games, Champ Sports Baseball. And it looks gorgeous. Oh my God. So let's take a look at uh, Champ Sports Baseball, some of the graphics from that. Uh, let me bring it up on my screen and we can kind of dissect it a bit because it is really, really nice. Um, so let's bring it over and let's see what he says. He says, with baseball season delayed, hopefully not that long, Champs, Sport, Champs, Games, Champs Games has been busy at work on their first Champs Sports game, Champs Sports Baseball. The game will feature multiple play options, exhibition, tournament, one or two player, multiple teams with a team editor, and even an announcer using the Atari Vox. Stay tuned for more details in the coming months. So let's take a look, see if I can switch this over without revealing any of my information here. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, screen capture. Uh, hmm. Nope, I'm going to do it this way. Oh, that's better anyway. Uh, one second. Let's get that out. So there's the first graphic. Um, he put up, th he posted three screen grabs showing three different views of the game. And this one looks like it's uh, the batting view, the pitching and batting view. Um, there, uh, I don't think you can see my mouse, unfortunately. Um, we've got the uh, pitcher up here. You can see a little ball in his hand, white ball. Uh, you can see the batter and the back catcher right there. And it looks like green is the background color and the alternating white and brown is the play field used to a great effect. Like the staggered lines don't even matter. The mound looks really nice. He's got the white plates. He's got the uh, base lines in white. Looks excellent. Um, he's got two different players player zero player one for the batter and for the back catcher uh got white socks on the batter br uh, gray pants hi atari you're gonna check out the new game from a champ games there and he's got all the info up top 
at looking just awesome. People are color coded. We've got uh, red and blue. Ooh, does he have? No, that's green. I thought he had uh, blue and the uh, skin color on the same line, but that's that was just uh... Champ Games is going to do it again. Any views of the outfield? Yes, we're going to go to the outfield next. Uh, he's got balls, strikes, outs, got runs, hits, errors as well, so you can make an error. Uh, he's got all the different, uh, he's got visitor and home, uh, all the innings. So let's take a look at the next uh, next picture. Come on. Back you go. Okay, next picture. Loading, 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 loading. Come on. What is the issue here? Oh, now you're going to fail on me? Come on. Get it together. There we go. Okay. Now, this is the view from uh, the infield view, looks like. And looks like he's got... This might change. It's got the back catcher as a solid color. Oh, that might be your active person that you're currently um, running around and, and getting the ball. Because I think I see a ball in his hand right there. You see the white? Um, you've got the runner who has presumably hit the ball somewhere. Very infield to the back catcher. Um, you've got all the infield players uh looking really good um very very similar so i'm guessing the designation of who has the ball is going to be a solid red color so it's like really really visible um it could be it could flash back and forth between the normal colors and so you can see there the resolution of the players has decreased because they're smaller because it has to show more um so that looks really really good so let's go to the third shot which shows the outfield just one second. Let me get that ready. Come on. There we go. And this is going to show, is it left field? I can't remember if it's, it's got some graphical glitches, but um, there we go. Let's transition over there. Uh, and an even more reduced version of the players. As you can see, they're just a little bit smaller. Got some minor graphical glitches here and there. But you don't see anybody with the ball. Um, and it looks like everybody is the normal colors. Nobody is a solid red here. Um, an even more reduced baseline, looking really good still. Um, it's already better than any prior 2600 baseball game. Hardball's look, hardball looks really good. If you haven't seen hardball for 2600, that looks amazing. And it's like a, a view from the pitcher. But the graphics in this are, are really, really good, especially with the three different views. Um, uh, nice proportions. Yeah, it's been reducing, reducing, reducing. So there's three different sizes of each of the, of the players. Um, you can see some... Um, blur there you can see that the first third and pitcher on the same line so the third baseman is like say player zero and the pitcher and and first base are alternating between uh 30 hertz on player one um so it's looking really good and then there's this crosshair thing now i'm not sure what that means is that where you're aiming to throw the ball? Is that where you're aiming? It's It's got to be the pitcher's team that is using the crosshair. But is that to throw the ball? Is that to catch the ball? I would think it's more to throw the ball. So that's interesting. Uh, Metal Lunar says, so is the crosshair showing where the ball is expected to land? Oh, it might be where it's expected to land. But you could you could use a um, the white uh, of the ball and a shadow beneath it, and that will kind of tell you how high the ball is. So I I don't know because the the direction of the ball should tell you where it's going to land if you can if you can see it. 
So I would think it's more where you want to throw it to. And other baseball games, usually you like move left and right on the joystick to kind of move the crosshair. So it might be just a really visible way to know which person you're throwing it to. And you'd be like left, right, left, right, up, down to move it all over to the different people because you don't want to throw it to a middle of a field. You always want to throw it to a person. So there's no point in moving the crosshairs like 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 that around. It'd be like like quick jumps. I think that would make sense. Uh, he has commented on each screenshot. Oh, okay. Optional targeting crosshairs to help track down the ball. So that's where the ball is then? And not where you want to throw it. That's interesting. It makes it visible who has the ball, because the ball is, is pretty tiny, I guess. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, it looks like a lot like the NES, NES game bases loaded. Uh, and Metal Lunar says, I recall games from SNES, SNES, that era that had a marker to show where the ball was going. So optional targeting crosshairs to track down the ball. Targeting means a target of where you want to throw it. So that makes more sense where it's going to be thrown. Okay. Well, that is uh, really, really gorgeous. And the, one of the more exciting parts of it is that not only is it look gorgeous and it's going to have awesome sound and, and obviously everything thrown at it, it's also going to work with the Quad Tari and the Atari Vox at the same time. So that means you'll be able to have announcements. Um, I mean, he didn't say anything about the Quad Tari and his announcements, but I was talking with him. And um, the Quad Tari and the Atari Vox will work at the same time. So you'll have two players playing on port one and the Atari Vox on port two so you can hear the announcer um, saying everything. That's going to be really, really fun. Um, and I'm going to uh, be getting an updated Quad Tari. This is the old uh, old version. This is the prototype of a Quad Tari. Um, there we go. Um, that doesn't work anymore because the uh, code has changed for it. So only old builds of Wizard of War and Galagon work with this one. Um, but I'll be sent another Quad Tari so that on an upcoming stream, we'll be able to play the new, uh, let me get the name right, Champ Sports baseball um so that'll be a lot of fun uh when is that supposed to come out uh he says more details in the coming months oh the hardware um the hardware is done um so but i'm not sure when it's going to be mass made on mass oh what is happening oh no it goes to sleep uh annoying um so yeah i'm not sure when the hardware is going to be on made on mass there's been no announcements yet um but it it is finalized as far as I know because um, there's already two games that have come out for it, um, which is Galagon and Wizard of War. And this will be the third, um, probably Gorf Arcade as well will be supporting it, I would think. I would think every game going forward um, from Champ, uh, Champ Games will be supporting the Quad Tari so that you can have the Atari Vox with high scores and either two players or alternating two players. You don't have to pass the joystick back and forth. And, and another big, big announcement. Champ Games has a new secret game that he has not talked about, that he has not announced, that will have it, its exclusive world debut on Zero Page Homebrew on May 13th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Um, so make sure you be there, mark your calendars. Um, it's already in the schedule. Um, I don't know what game it is, so it's going to be like the Galaga announcement. Oh, my nose is so itchy. Um, so I don't know what the game is. Probably, so, but what's the game? I don't know what the game is. <laughs> um, I have guesses, some guesses, but there's been absolutely no hints uh, made. So, uh, um uh, no hints made to me. So he's probably going to do the exact same thing, either put it in a zip file with a password or did like he uh, did last time with Galagon, where he actually put a password in the game itself. Like I, he gave me the ROM and wouldn't give me the password till he put the password in the chat. 
Um, so that was really exciting. So I'm, I'm guessing he's going to do something very similar to that. He's going to pass me over the, the ROM first. Um, only a month away. No problem. Yep. Yep. Actually, yeah, it's uh, just over a month away. Not too long to wait. Um, so uh, I'm going to wait till Tanny gets here to open up the um, package I have. Nothing video game related, but still very exciting for me. And uh, at, on the last game, we'll be playing uh, Space Man Explorer for high score. Not high score. I'm not going to get high score. S. Ramirez 2008 has destroyed pretty much every any chance of me getting a high score on it. But trying to get a patch for it, which is uh, 4,000 for the patch. And I think... Um, Packrat said 8,000 for a possible special thing. Let me see what he said. A uh, score of 8,000. He may sneak in an extra perk. So we're going to try for 8,000. We're going to go for 4,000. But now that he's set another goal, we're going to have to try for 8,000. It's, it's hard. I've been practicing a little bit. Not seriously, but a little bit. Um, so the first game is Jack and the Beanstalk by Chris Reed, a.k.a. Atari 2600 Land. This is a 2009 work in progress, which I can't... Uh, let's see. Is it a work in progress? No, it is not a work in progress. Uh, he actually released on cartridge, so I need to change that. Uh, let me just get rid of that. Because this was uh, posted... Let's see. Yeah, it was put out on cartridge. Uh, so this was put out on cartridge. Uh, limited number, uh, 25 of them at PRG 2010. And then they made uh, an unknown number of second run of the cart as well. Um, so let's jump into that and take a look at the game. Turn on the Atari. Atari Hot Plus. Ready. Ready, and that is the sound of the new Atari Vox. If you haven't got uh, the new Atari Vox, it is available at Atari Age and will work no problem with no glitches with, on Wizard of War Arcade. And um, that's why they had to make the update. It was glitching out um, because it's a very intense game for the voices, lots of voices. I think 60 or more, 60 plus voices, different uh, speech, um, different sentences in it unbelievable so this game was first posted january 2nd 2008 this build is from november 21st 2009 it's a f4 32k game other games he's made uh, about a billion but they include billy the ball castle of doom dr flynn and his pills isaiah's we chase jack and the beanstalk killer bees kirby 2600 one button bob mid space super mario sisters white water madness and a million others and you can download this I don't know how far this game goes with it before the cartridge. This might be the final. It's kind of hazy of what it is. But before we do that, Tanya is back. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Sorry about that. Work, work phone calls in the middle of it the happens. live stream. <laughs> it happens. So we're going to uh, open not up. expecting. Yeah. Open up the package. Mm -hmm. I delayed it till you got here. Hey, Metal Lunar. Hey, John Drill, welcome. Like, I know what this is, but it's still Do you? extremely exciting. You're oh, excited. of course I know what it is. Is this what you just got? Hmm? Is this what you just got in the mail? Today. Oh. Today in the mail. Exciting. Yes. There's nothing like opening packages. <laughs> that's why there's Even whole... when you know exactly what it is, that's it's why there's like, whole Woo! YouTube channels dedicated I know, to it. I know. unboxing. Hi, Gretams. Hey, Gretams. Yeah, I got distracted. Someone from work called and I had to I had to answer, so. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This very well packed. There we go. Now this is really, really exciting because it is somewhat of a milestone <laughs> <laughs> in uh, my career, <laughs> my profession. Nothing to do with video games. <laughs> So I haven't seen this yet, so That's why here, he's really excited to open it, because yeah. I got home and it was still sealed. Yes. And, uh... So, yeah. you guess what it is? Yeah. Well, you know what it is, but what actually is it? It is... Ooh! It's a Half-Naked Woman on half -naked a Blu-ray box! 
<laughs> it's a perfect 14 and people who have watched this show a little bit um, knows that this is my film and this is my <laughs> award-winning top-selling documentary film a yeah. perfect 14 mm -hmm. um, it's about plus size models in the plus size modeling industry and uh, yeah this is our poster on the front it actually looks really good yeah and on the back is a collection of um, scenes from the film mm. I had nothing to do with making this mm. <laughs> this blu-ray so mm. um, I this is like a surprise because I couldn't you didn't yeah I didn't know what was going to be on the back nice uh, Perfect 14 explores the world of plus size models fighting to reshape the fashion industry and the beauty standards of a society holding fashion industry leaders accountable for the responsibility in sized based segregation Oh, it's um, playable in all territories, which is good. Nice. It's not restricted to North America. Mm. Uh, NTSC, Gravitas. Oh, it has Erlen's name on it. That's very Ooh, cool. Oh, Erlen. Yeah, he made the back. Oh, good for Erlen. Yep, there you go. Nice. So very let's, nice. Let's see what the disc looks like. <laughs> Are you going to take it out of the plastic? Yes, I am. Oh. I've got other copies. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Using your teeth, yeah. Way to not get COVID-19. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been in plastic for a while. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah. And if you're interested, it's currently streaming on oh. iTunes and Google Play and Amazon in the U.S. Um, right now it's pay, pay-per-view, right? I don't know yep. how you describe rent that. Rent or buy it. To rent or buy, yeah. To stream. Yeah. To stream. Yeah. yeah. So, and hopefully at some point it'll in, end up on a subscription service. So hopefully. Yeah. Oh, there's Jihan again. Nice. There you go. Yay. Looks looks fine. Looks good. I've I've made Got my the own stamp of approval. I've made my own <laughs> DVDs in the past. I've yeah. never I never made a Blu-ray, but I made a bunch of DVDs in oh, the yeah. past and made my own covers and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got them professionally pressed as well before. Nice. So this is very decent looking. But it's it's someone who made it who's not you, which is very exciting. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody did this <laughs> for me. Someone did this for him. So that is fun. Yes. So here oh, we go. Thank We're gonna you. jump sorry. into the first yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Try to delay it. As yeah. Much as no, possible. I'm I'm very sorry about that. That's okay. Hold down the middle button. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, just the is on. Ah, come on, second green. There we go. Good. Missilization error. That's never good. Uh oh. At our Fox Plus. Ready. All I did was add Brahms. Oh no, what did you do? Destroy. Nope, it's good. Phew. Oh. Phew. Phew. Scary times. Oh, oh, sorry. She's trying to navigate in um lag time. <laughs> what kind of Atari? It is Atari 2600 Junior Composite modded. Yep. Uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. Okay. Not the text. No. Let's Can't run texts. Um... Atari Vox ready, love that. Yes. Ah. Vocal volume, very loud. So, this is by Atari 2600 LAN, a uh, real name Chris Reed. He said, uh, Since Ghost Up 2 won't be made for a while, it uses a super chip, I need something to work on. So, I decided either a game based on Beneath the Planet of the Apes or Jack and the Beanstalk. The former would probably run into copyright issues with 20th Century Fox. Remember the Futurama hack? Well, the latter doesn't have any copyright issues. So here's my idea, uh, which would probably play like the Planet of the Apes prototype. So jump into it. Level 1, which is what I'm guessing we're on. We start the story off where Jack just traded his cow, or whatever, for some magic beans. Five or so. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, figure it out. Uh, we'll get there. Now Jack has to make his way back to his house without running into ninjas who want to steal his magic beans. So there's the beans in the bottom left mm -hmm. corner. Ah. Um, and you lost one. Yeah, but I don't know how to... If a ninja touches you, you lose a bean. In this level, if you lose all five beans, the game ends. How do I get past 
past him. Go through the maze. Yeah, but he walks through the walls. Well, then don't run into him when he's on your area. Ugh. <laughs> These are said and done. Oh, oh. He picked up something. Oh, you ran out of time. What? Get moving. Get yeah, moving. Yeah, but I, I can't get past him. You did. You just didn't get finished quick enough. Go. There you go. What is that thing on the ground? Uh, points. Looks oh. Like. Nice. Just didn't get a bean back. Got okay. Three beans left. The nice. sound of the music is a bit loud on our end. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very high, steady. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully yeah. that's a little bit better. Let me know if that's good. Sorry about that. Wait, what, what is going on? Oh, what kind um, of Atari is that? Is the Harmony, yes, a Harmony Encore. Is ah! it? You went right for him. No, <laughs> he, it drifts a little. It's weirdly drifty. <laughs> It's, it's ah. <laughs> Do you have an Atari like a joystick? Uh, mm. we could try joystick if you like. Ugh, it's like try really joystick? weird. Blame in the tools. I do. Uh, oh, he left. <laughs> he he left. just ran away. Well, that's good. That is kind of funny. I'm gonna go right for you. Ah, Run! Ah, I get stuck. No, uh, I get stuck on the walls. walls. Sticky walls. But it drifts. It's weird. Better? Oh, thank you, Carl G, for letting me know about the volume. It is quite piercing. Yeah. Do you want to try a joystick? Sure. Okay. Well, I might as well. Finish it off. Yeah. Go! He kind of wanders. No, he's different in every room. Oh. Sometimes he's jumpy like that. Yeah. He has different movements, but you do get kind of stuck on the walls. Sticky walls. That is a mm. thing in Atari Land. Is um, you get kind of stuck. You but get I'd... stuck unless it's programmed the right way. Like, you, I don't. Find walls this are very, very very sticky. Very precise. Ha! Ah! It's 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 weird. It's like sometimes. Oh, I ran out. Ran out of time. Really? I guess you start. So how many how many things did it say? Come on, get out of the way. Uh, back to his house. Does it say how many levels you have to make it through? How many do you think you've made it through? <laughs> Just start it over. Where am I going? To the right. Ah! 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 <laughs> like... What are you doing? Of course, he could randomly just block your path the whole time. Well, yeah. It's... Go! 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 <laughs> no! Oh, bye, Atari. Sorry. Freaked out the cat. <laughs> Stop getting sticky. <laughs> Cats are flighty. Yeah, they are. Oh, I'm so stuck. Oh. I'm stuck on the walls. The music gets Ugh. in your ears. Where are you going? Get out of the way. Go, go, go. Up, up, up. Ugh. Why did it turn off? Uh, it's Is set it to something. No. Oh, it is the battery. Of course it is. Why is it plugged in? Cats, I blame it you. It is plugged in. It has this problem all the time. Here we go. Just goes out just a little bit. See, the floaty one is almost easier because you can draw him away. Ooh, this one's going to be tough. Oh, ah, whoa, sticky go. walls! Sticky oh, walls! Down, around, go! <laughs> Oh, he's following. Go! Sticky walls. You get stuck. Oh, oh boy. Can I get out? No. Go now. Oh, this one's going to be really hard. I'm down. No. Oh, ah! no. oh good. Oh, now random. it's crazy. <laughs> crazy random dude. Rando. The random ones are much easier, aren't yeah, they? Cause, yeah, because you don't have to draw them. Well, it depends on the maze, actually. This Maybe guy... it just goes forever, and I because you can select the level. Oh, it's like he sees you. Ah, ah, sticky walls. Oh, he didn't see you? Ah! <laughs> My turn, so. Sticky walls. 12.46. Ah. Oh, yeah, we're going to try the other choice. Yeah. <laughs> See? He's like, blame your tools. And then he's like, oh, no, 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 this is no good. It's fine. It's fine. It's troubling. It is sticky walls, though. Okay. 
He's gonna, How did I know? He's gonna get you. I had this trouble before. Like, I can't go left or right with this. Oh! Do you have an old school? go up and down. What? I can't go left and right. Oh. Isn't it... Is there a switch on it? No. 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 It might be because we plugged it in halfway through, or it might be because it's broken. Let me try the other one. Please stand by for technical issues. <laughs> I mean, you can go back to the Genesis controller if you... If you yeah, if this to. doesn't work, I will. Yeah. It does work, it's just sticky. And he's coming right for you and... Ah! Ah! And I did nothing to prevent it. <laughs> Dios ch kilos, there needs to be jack. an option to turn off that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Jack Sprite is great. He's got four colors on him. It's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's pretty awesome. He's got like a little purple bee. Oh, okay. Is it working? Yeah. It is the other one. Damn, another dead... Ugh. Another dead one? Yeah, but maybe I can fix that one. Is oh. that better? I want that. Oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah? Oh, that was close. Mm -hmm. Okay, get out of my way. Mm -hmm. Like, seriously. Go to the left. Go, go, go! <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's yelling at an annoying cat come on get 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 get, get, get out of here <laughs> get out of here i'll spray you spray you the water they're all asking if ah. there's um music options on the difficulty switches <laughs> can you turn Just it off try it black and white uh yeah black and white Sorry. careful this right the one labeled black and white color uh which one did you just press the black and white. okay it's a pause and it killed me get it try the ones in the back Yes. It's gonna kill me. The one on the right? Difficulty? No. Well, there are no other sounds in the game, so... Apologies. What I, what I can do is just... Turn it down. Mute it. Yeah. I think we all, um... <sighs> okay, we'll go to second, the second game. There's a second game? Yeah. Oh, oh. Password. The password. I think this all has to be... Con oh, turn it. There we go. Level two. Nope. I uh, guess you have to earn your way to level two. Level two? Is that what it is? I just set set it to two. Yeah. So that's password. See, I can set it to two, three, four. Okay. Yeah, no, that's four. Yeah, it's the same game. But it's just, they're just different rooms, right? No, there's like... <laughs> distinct levels in this game oh so we just haven't made it far enough oh i see you have to make it to level two yeah isn't wouldn't that be what the password's for um it probably gives you a password on level mm. two when you make it there ah uh, oh this is long walk come on come yes. on come on come on no <laughs> like it's it's random enough that you could actually be killed by having no ch oh come on by having no chance whatsoever to make it through to the end. He could block the end exit the whole time. Mm -hmm. It is random. I like the ghost ninja who just floats towards you. <laughs> He's not walking. Yeah. He's just floating. He's floating. Get your, there you go. Do you get more time? Uh, I think just points. I don't. I didn't see if the time went up. Yeah. That would be a bonus. Come on. Get out of my way. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> go to the left. Yeah. There we go. Eventually. Uh, we'll go this way. Rando. There's lots of options for a random one. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, this oh. guy's gonna go straight for you. Well, I'm just oh, gonna... he hasn't seen you. Now he sees you. <sighs> that was close. Oh. oh, Mr. Floaty, what am I gonna do? Oh, Damn not it. quite. Oh, this one doesn't go till he sees you. Mm -hmm. Oh, what was that? Weird. He goes for a bit. Oh, mm -hmm. I was running away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, he's gone. Because <laughs> I got the bean. I don't know. That's, that happened in one of 
my levels too. It's like oh. he just ran off the screen. I'm like, come oh, on, come on, come on. ah, that's that's kind of weird. <laughs> oh, no, random. Nope, rando. Seemed like he was like inching his way towards me, but he was not. Oh, press the button and throw the watermelon at him. <laughs> Kathy Mantudi's like, read me, read me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a watermelon. Oh, well, you should have thrown it at him, but that's I'll okay. I'll do it next time. How many do I have? Oh, if you eat the green dot, the enemy runs away, it seems. Yeah, but now oh, we now we get that the see. watermelon has a purpose. Oh, he does run away. Okay. Oh, interesting. Which watermelon? Do you still have a watermelon? That's a green dot. Well, I ate one last uh, level. Well, so. I don't think you eat it. I think you hit the button and you shoot it up. Um, yeah, I will save it for a floaty dude. Yeah. Ah! Oh! Oh! What is this? I found a secret level. Chris Reed? I guess. Oh! Yep, that was a secret little level. Chris Reed? That's the... Ah! Ooh! Oh. What's that? I want it. Is that a watermelon? Oh! Oh! Bonus points? Oh! Cool! Developer room, yeah. 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 <gasps> I don't have one. Ah! <laughs> can only carry one at a time, I guess. Mm. So that level is an Easter egg. Mm-hmm. Ah! My beans! My beans! No! <laughs> Game over. Okay, now that you know a little bit more about it. Well, I'm hoping the control's a little better. Read me, read me, read me! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that when well, I was reading right through. Away. When you eat it? Ah. Oh. Um, well, level yeah. two is up the beanstalk. This would play more like level one, one of Super Mario Brothers 2, the part with the vines, if you don't take the shortcut. Jack climbs his way up the beanstalk, avoiding deadly birds and such. From levels two to four, the beans will replace, be replaced with ah, lives. I knew that was going to work. Uh, level three, the giant's castle. Jack must avoid the castle guards whilst navigating the huge castle, find the magic harp, and the goose lays the golden eggs. Level four, down the beanstalk. Jack climbs down the beanstalk, avoiding the same deadly birds and stuff, and brings the goose and harp and Jack and his mother live happily ever after. Does this sound like a good idea for the 2600? Um, and, oh yeah, I do have an instruction manual, yeah. so let's read and see how long ah, this says. Oh, you didn't have sticky. one? Is still well, the walls are sticky. sticky. The walls are sticky. I forgot that there was a instruction manual. Oh, is there? Yep. Just opening it now. Uh, uh, there are 32 screens in the, uh, <gasps> in the first level, apparently. Oh. Oh come no no no! On. Sorry. Oh. 32. 32 if you're on level 1, which we are. So we go to level 2 and there's only 16. Ah, timer. There's a back. timer in the uh, every level except level 3. Timer is the green bar at the bottom right of the lives. If you don't get past a screen by the time a timer expires, you'll lose a life. Scoring. There's a point system in the game. In every level except level 3, the faster you complete each room uh, screen, the more points you get. In level 3, the timer is the bonus point timer and does not reflect how much time nice. you have left to complete the level. Pausing the game, which we found out, color black and white. Level one, the village. What is going on? It's like Boo what in, in Mario. You look at him, he stops. You look away. Yeah, but I was trying to shoot something at him and it wasn't letting me shoot. This guy's not Boo. <laughs> no, he isn't. This guy is not Boo. Uh, there are three different patterns of movement for the troll, one of which are randomly selected when you enter a screen. Oh, oh. no, you ran out of time. That was terrible. <laughs> terrible. Okay. Right there. Which one? Village? Yep. Oh, let's go to level two. Cause Can we? Because then there's only 16 screens. Because mm. this is, 32 is a lot of screens mm. of this stuff to get through. Oh, um, yes. So I can lure them over here. There are three different patterns of That's movement cool. for the troll. One of which is randomly selected once you enter a screen. 
One is randomly moving across the screen, one is he follows you everywhere, and the other is he follows you only if your back is turned towards him. I like that one. To help fend off the troll, in most screens there is a square watermelon. <laughs> Each one you get nets you 50 points. To use it at once, you, uh, to use it once you touch it, press fire, then, then the direction you want to throw it. Mm. Oh, okay. So fire and then the, then the direction. Okay. Hitting a troll with it nets you 100 points. Okay, but what is that green thing after that shows up? Is it just a point bonus? I don't know. It must be. Come on, get um, out of my way. Do I have a watermelon? Oh my god, I just wasted it. After the level is over, you'll see a cutscene where Jack's mother throws the beans out the window <laughs> and overnight the bean stock grows. Oh, okay. We haven't passed level one yet. No, because there, there was 32 of them. Mm. Oh, good, he went away. But now we're on 16, only 16, so that yeah. helps. That helps a lot. I don't know which one we're on. Five. Some of these levels are much easier than others. Oh, yeah. Depending on the type Anything of troll with, you get. With oh. weird, weird diagonals? Your timer does not stop. No. <laughs> when you go in that developer room. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. You don't have the watermelon? Uh, I'd rather not use it on random. Yeah, guy. but you, I think you can only carry one at once. True, but when am I going to get another mm, one? This looks new. Oh, good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shoot him. Yeah. There we go. Good stuff. And there's, is that another watermelon or is I that a wall? I, I, it's like a bonus. Do you get points? Yeah, you get 50 points for it. Hmm. Oh, this is uh, the is one where you boo? turn your back. It's a boo. Go. Must be getting close now. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. This one's nice and open. Ooh, I might have to shoot you. No! <laughs> Bad aim. It does seem random, so often if you ah. get if you get a chasey guy. Yeah. You'll get a random one afterwards if you die, which I suppose is for the best. Yeah, it is. Some of their movement oh, is really on. erratic, though. Like. <laughs> very erratic. Oh, here's the end oh, of level one. Oh, my beans out. Oh, very nice. Oh, and there's the beanstalk. Might be able to bring the music back if it's different. Oh, the green beanstalk's growing. Mm -hmm. I've turned the music back on just in case. We'll see if it's the same music. There's a bird. Yeah. Easily avoided. Yeah. Oh, cool. Little paths. Nope. Oh, it's kind of a vertical maze. What's over here? Oh, oh my God. Oh, and that's how you die. That's not what you want. You can fall off the beanstalk on purpose, too. Mm -hmm. So it's not a terrible thing. Cause you, so you can kind of jump over if you need to. If you get high enough, like oh. you have to here. Well, that's cool. Oh. That's really cool. That is cool. So, level two, up the beanstalk. After level one, you begin level two with five lives. In this level, Jack makes his way up the beanstalk. Watch out for the birds, because if you touch them, you'll lose a life. These blackbirds fly from left to right. There are 32 screens. Oh, God. At least these are less painful. Ah. Much less painful. Ah. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. Woof. These are very cool. Yeah, it's a nice concept. Yep. Now, which way is the right way? Oh. It is either way. Yeah. <laughs> well, kind of the other way is the right way. Oh. 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 oh they're very dive bomby. They're like crows. They're angry <laughs> they crows. Are very angry crows. Mm hmm. Uh, 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 uh. Uh. Ooh. I like it because it's it's very puzzly. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, how do I get from? No. Oh no! No no no, oh, no! At least you respawn right where you died. Uh, yeah, and the crow resets. Is it a crow? Hmm. What is it? What does it say? What it is? Just a black bird. bird? Just, oh, a blackbird, an actual blackbird. Oh, or black is, bird. Um, ah. Just it. Hold on. Uh, blackbirds. Blackbirds. But it would make sense because blackbirds, ah. Ah, oh. blackbirds are in nursery rhymes too. So, 
Oh, oh. my god. The blackbird has the exact same pattern each time. Oh my god. So that's good. He sees you, he goes up <laughs> or down. Yeah. It's getting more challenging for sure. When he gets to a certain distance away from you, he starts to divert towards you. Yeah. Oof. So you have to j stay at least a little bit away, <laughs> like enough. You kind of have to plan out whether he's high on the screen. I'm trying to figure out ah! how this God. beanstalk is suspended <laughs> in mid midair in it's magic, multiple pieces. So. Magic beanstalk. Oh, my oh God. he gotcha. It's a magic beanstalk. Magic. Ah! Ah! Go, 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 go! Ah! Not doing well in the lives department here. Well, it's the first time doing the level, so... Go, go! I really just don't want to do that whole other level over again. Oh, come Move on. forward. I, I, Move past him. There you it's go. It's dangerous. Of course it's dangerous. Dive bombs. Ooh. Ooh. Big fall here. Ooh. Big fall. Trust. Trust. Yay, fall. level Ooh. three. Nice. Where's my passwords? How do you get the passwords? Can you look it up? Uh, I see nothing in here about passwords. Time nope. counting down. Time is counting down. Three, the that? castle. Ah. Okay, through the castle. Nope. Once you get done climbing the beanstalk, you'll enter the castle where you won't be able to get out until you have both the goose that lays the golden eggs and the magical harp, which are 50 points each. Once you have both, make your way to the castle's entrance and go through. Okay. Harp? Beware the giant's guard dogs. If they attack you, you lose a life. If you find the giant, fighting him is optional, but if you shoot his feet six times, you get 100 bonus points. Each successful hit of his feet earns you 10 points. In level 3, there is a bonus oh, timer, harp. the red bar at the bottom of the screen. If you leave the castle while the red bar is still viewable, you get bonus points. The is that amount, a dangerous thing? What is this? The goose. It looks like oh. a goose to me. Okay, I've got the harp and the goose. Now I exit. Get the hell out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I remember, no, I remember how to get out. Oh, he's cute. He's a very cute puppy. <laughs> they don't look like guard dogs. They, 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 they look need... like little Scotties. <laughs> they do. They're Scotty god dogs. They didn't say well, which Scotties kind. Scotties are pretty yappy. They are. But they, they need lot. These guys need lots of sleep, <laughs> so they have to rest frequently. Uh, ah, that's a very interesting mechanic. You get close, they wake up, but they go back to sleep very quickly. They're like ruff ruff ruff. Jesus. They're kind of erratic. Okay. Is it down you... or up? Mm -hmm. It was up. Yay! I have to go all the way down? Uh, level 4, down the beanstalk. Oh, you gotta... What? Level 4 is How the same as level 2. You only huh? go down the beanstalk instead of up it. Also in level 4, if you get off the beanstalk, a wind carries Jack up instead oh, of falling god. down. What? Oh my god, I got all my five lives back. Yeah, That's you did. Good. Thank goodness. Oh, you're oh. flying. What is going on? How do you get... You have to stay on the green the whole time. And you fly... Oh. oh, so it's the complete opposite. Yes. And luckily, this is pretty cute. Ah, ah. It kind of works because the other way you're falling down. Yeah. Oh. Damn it! Go go go! Blackbirds. It's like yeah, you're following. The opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Very is... smart mechanics. Yeah, it's very different. Oh, no! you're floating away. <laughs> floating on the breeze. Oh, oh, how come I can't? You have to really wrench to the left, I guess. Oh, oh, God. oh you gotcha. Oh, I made it. Oh, oh no. my God, no. <laughs> I'm out of time? Oh, no. I, yeah, yeah, I ran out of time. You can't get hit again. <sighs> Be very careful. And I have to make it in time, too. Do you? Because on the first pass, there was no time limit now, on this level. Now you have to go like... Uh. <gasps> yeah. Carl G says, clever way to reuse those levels for a whole different experience. It's completely different. Yeah. I like that. I like that. That's pretty innovative. Think the way you do things. Mm -hmm. You have to go really extreme now. 
like to the f oh. Oh. to the bottom. And you can't fall off though. Because you're <gasps> in trouble. Really big trouble if you fall off. Go, go, go. Okay. Just have to time the birds really well. Yep. At least if you have the option of falling off the screen. Uh, no. It's okay. You're going to get birded. Oh, I'm running out of time. I'm almost done the game. Oh, you know what? Where's the passwords? No, it doesn't say. You have to look them up. I think we get the idea. You probably missed the final animation, but I don't know if you want to start from the beginning. Again. No. No. <laughs> Fun little game though. Very, the very, very good. The gameplay really fits into the whole fairy tale. I, I like that a lot. Creating a little story. Looks like uh, looks a little except small for SR seventy one. What? Except for the music, yeah. The music's a bit. It gets on you. <laughs> it gets on you. Uh, yeah, really, really clever, clever game. Mm -hmm. And I think that happens a lot with uh, Atari twenty six hundred lands games. They mm. look rudimentary from the outset but then when you start playing them you discover the mechanics of the game are really really cleverly done yeah um which is always a really nice surprise um and and, and a lesson that you shouldn't be judging the game from the uh the look of it mm -hmm. okay ready so now we're going to get to Ready. the second game, which is mm -hmm. super. Be very careful with your beer, please. I don't know why that's like that. It's, there we go. Um, which is Super Mario Sisters uh, number one by Chris Reed. Again, Atari 2600 Land. First posted July 24th, 2006. Uh, you have to figure out which one is which. You have to hold down the button. Two. Go back. Hold down the button. You see the whole thing. Oh. The other one, um, and this is an F eight eight K game. So I made this platform game using Batari Basic. What do you think about it? That's his first post. Yeah, I just posted just wondering what oh. the difficulty switches are set to. Yes, we need to switch them back to basic. Color, color, B and B. Those are the defaults. Thank you very much. Oh. RC7, to access to... the password screen, press up, then down. Oh, yeah, we found the password screen. We just weren't sure what the passwords were. If anybody wants to research what the password is for level four, yeah, because it didn't display ever a password on the screen, yeah, um, we'll go back and play level, not four, yeah, five. At some point. Yeah. Four. Today. There's no five. It's just four. Level three is 39. Yeah. Well, it's ninjas. Yeah. Up the beanstalk. Yeah. The castle. And then down, down the, the beanstalk. So we need the password for level four. Four, yeah. Not three. Yeah. I don't want to do three again. Um, but that's okay. Okay. Oh. These are old school. Okay, that is Ooh. something. Oh. Might have to play this game on emulator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Let's did see. not like that. We'll see uh, if his line count is happy times or not. Ooh, it's it's jumpy jumpy. We'll see how this level goes. It's uh, it's a moving around. Yeah. Cool. It's like going up. It's, it's making me a little dizzy. Mm, surviving. Oh. What? Oh. 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 Ah! <laughs> Oh, it's it's jumpy, but it's fine. Uh, then he says, first 8K build began work on level two. Level two has an item, the first power up in the game. To use the power ups, touch them and press the fire button simultaneously. Uh, the first power up is a blue star. When you get one, you get really big. To get past the first situation, if you touch the enemy in level two, screen two, you become small. So you get to go back to level screen one of level two to get the power up again. You need to touch the little lines in the screens. They appear in to get to the next screen. All right, getting further. And you want to write for it. 
it's really like woo. Yeah, a bit a uh, bit rough it's on the cute. eyes. Cute. I like the cute little stick figure though. Yeah, an outline. The Maria sister. Maria. Maria? Probably Maria. I like Maria better. Yeah. Have you ever heard anybody with that name before? Maria? No, Maria. <laughs> yeah. Mar Mario is Maria. That's true. Pretty much. A's and O's. Yeah. The male versions. Oh. Frogs? <laughs> what are those? <laughs> Pretty These are a little, bit, uh, a little bit easier than the last level. Very slow. Yeah, they seem easier. Up. Oh, yeah. Fishes. Oh, I can move anywhere I want. I will stay... You're in the underwater level. Yeah, I'll stay way at the top. They barely even... Oh, people are oh, banging pots and pans yeah. outside. I was like, what is that music? I know. I, I'm like, I didn't hear any music before. Oh. There's no music in this game, by the way. <laughs> There's no sounds whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, damn it. You can just jump down. There's no floating. I think I have to go up. Cute. Oh, level two. Level two. Something is not looking good with that. Yes. I don't know what's happening there. Yeah. Ooh. This is that is a power up? Rough. Yeah. Huge. That's so cute. Oh my god. That's massive. You have to run across? Yeah. Oh, my nose. Oh, <laughs> oh my nose. Oh, it's too late. I will wait. 40 is level 4. Excellent. Mm -hmm. We will go back. Uh, so. RC70. 47 infinite lives. 28 level 2. 39 level 3. 37 level 3 invincible. 40 level 4. 66 ending. If you want to just see the ending. Oh, wow. Um, so 40 is level 4. Unless you want to be... You win! I win. That was it? Yep. You oh, should okay. play it. I don't really want to. I think I just oh, saw you terrible. play it. <laughs> I'll play the terrible. next one. That's pretty short. Yep. It is. We can try going back to uh, we are. level First four. Map. Cute, though. Very cute. Very, Very cute. cute. I like yeah. the diversity Ready. of Ready. different types of uh, things going on. Mm -hmm. So we'll switch back to the first... Game. Check the beanstalk. Thank you very much to RC70. Forty. Okay. Oh, there we go. No. Oh, it is different music. Oh. Oops. Ah! Oh my God. Does the bird come out exactly where you are? No. He does. Oh, maybe. He does. He does. He comes out randomly at first. He comes out randomly. Oh, I ran out of yeah. time. Yeah. Yep, and then he comes out where you are. So you kind of want to... Yeah, he does. Move. <gasps> stay... Oh, no, he doesn't. No, he didn't. It's random. Okay. Oh. Somewhat. Maybe the second time. See how long it takes before... Can they hear the music? <laughs> yes, before somebody goes Before you go, nuts. turn it off! Turn ah. off the music. Oof. Yeah, the secret is to go to the most bottom corner. Oh, yet you can. Before you jump across and, and avoid the birds. Ah! Ah, no, it's so unfair. I, I swear the bird comes out where you are a lot of the time. It does sometimes. Or maybe it just seems that I way. I think you've just been unlucky. Oh my god. And I love how you just fly up. You <laughs> float away. Ah. Ah. It's a strong wind. It is a strong wind. Whew. How many? 32 screens of this? think oh god <laughs> yeah 32 i think Dang that's it. what it said why is that bird always there there we go 
Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Ah! That was so close. Level four is sixteen. Okay. Whoa, that was close. I'm almost done. Almost they are done. random on the way back. Oh. Are they? No, uh, this looks. This looks uh, like. I never saw. It. This looks easier. It's getting like. Yeah. More filled out. Yeah. Ugh, bird. Seriously, bird. Yeah, there. There's not as many spaces. Yeah, this looks like mm -hmm. the exact path back. Yeah, it is. Yep, getting very close now. I always, that one always reminds me of an X and Y chromosome. <laughs> All twisted together. Yeah. Yay! I didn't legitimately win. Oh, and he win. chopped it! Oh, and the giant's dead! Oh, no. Oh, oh the there's bird. the goose! And oh, the there's the harp! Jack and his mom live happily Aww. ever after. Awesome. The end. 60 screens. No, not 60. No, 16. 16. 60. <laughs> that would be a, That would be a pretty long, long level. Yeah. Press the button. So we're going to look at Super Mario Sister, Super Mario Sisters 2. And I, mm. I, I looked at this before the show, obviously. Um, I don't think there's much to this. Um, in fact, it looks very much like just part of the first game, mm. except for the title screen. Oh, wait, not switched over yet. And we can't do anything. What? What? What's not switched over? They can't see that. They didn't see the title screen. It just said SMS. It's totally different. It's, that's all it Hold said. The button. Yeah, but they didn't see it at all. <laughs> I haven't switched anything yet. You didn't Ready. see it. Other people were watching like, the screen. No, they can't see it. Oh, that you mean. Oh, yeah, I see. You're like, go, go, go. Yeah. go, go. I'm like still doing things. I know, and you're like I know. Running away with it. Uh, I think it's the first one. It is. It's like Ireland. Press, 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 go, go, go. We would like to play games. What do you want us, <laughs> what do you want us to say? Okay. Uh, so this is Super Mario Sisters 2. Mm-hmm. First posted July twenty third. This build is from July twenty third. He didn't. He just barely started it. Uh, this is a four K game. Uh, no updates to it. So go for it. That is what it is. And so it's very. Oh. <laughs> ran right into it. Can I go back? Yep. You have to go back. It didn't kill me though. It didn't kill me. Oh, this is this is crazy. Ooh. Oh. He made it past it, but then he died right on the next screen. Oh. <laughs> I think it's easier if you're small. Oh no, no. you can't. Head on back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> really? Gotta get big. And get past it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Hit that wasn't right. I hadn't even moved. I like how it's like Big Land on Super Mario Brothers. It's like a really, really ah. huge player sprite. It's probably one of the biggest player sprites I've ever seen in a game. Yeah, it's it's pretty much level two of the other one. Oh, oh, there you go. Hmm. RC70 says the music made it feel that long. Oh, do you make it? That's yep. it? Yeah, that's it. So it's just the back end of the other game. Oh, yeah, it, that's I right. think it's a, might be placeholders. I think it's even bigger than the boss <laughs> fire in Stay Frosty 2. <laughs> it's, it's maybe a bit taller than the boss fire in Stay Frosty 2. Oh. Like, the boss is massive in oh, Stay Frosty 2. Oh, okay, okay. Like really, really, really big. Mm -hmm. I mean, Stay Frosty 2 boss is much more detailed. but um, So that's probably the biggest player character. Mm. Definitely Stay Frosty 2 is the big one of the biggest bosses. Mm. Um, so 
uh, okay. Oh, he said, I'm I think I'm pretty much done with the first one. So here's a sequel. I'm planning to fit the maximum allowed 4K in this. It's going to be special power-ups, secret stages in this first build. The blue star makes you really big like in New Super Mario Brothers. Why be big? Because the buttons she needs to press to go into the next screen are way up high. If you get hit by an enemy, you shrink down. In this one, the button to get to the third stage just goes to the title screen because I haven't programmed the third screen yet. If you get hit by an enemy, just walk to the left to get the blue star again. To get the item, touch it and press fire. Um, so, he it looks like he just tagged what he was working on in the sequel into the first game and put it all together. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to take a look at uh, Cosmic Avenger, an early proof of concept by Daryl Spice Jr. Spiceware, a.k.a. Spiceware. Mm -hmm. uh, this was posted on November 15th, 2015. Press buttons. Mm. Uh, it's a 32K DPC Plus game. I use the game knit the word game very loosely because <laughs> it's a proof of concept it's not really a game it's it's but just, it's worth looking it's at. just uh trying out the uh yeah yeah it's showing what can be done um other games by daryl spice jr uh draconian frantic medieval mayhem Ooh. space rock stay frosty stay frosty 2 and timmy um oh actually yeah there's no there's no before shooting. we look at that oh um, have you gonna, flipped it over? You I did, but it over. Uh, we're going to look at something else first. We're going to look at what Cosmic Avenger looks like. Oh! We are also young and innocent back then. 2015. <laughs> there was no self-isolation. That's right. We were forced to stay indoors and play video games. Yeah. Oh, it's rough. <laughs> and make no money. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> are we playing that's very similar to this um uh there's there's a two games that are very similar we'll get to that okay um because it's just with the, well, we'll the ship that. navigating through the, the the cave yeah yeah there we go so this is the arcade of cosmic avenger mm -hmm. this might be blastingly loud but hopefully not um, so you can take a look at what it actually looks like in the arcade so that you can compare it to what, uh, Daryl Spice Jr. was mm, able to accomplish. Look at that. It. It's a horizontally scrolling shooter developed by Universal Entertainment Corporation, uh, released in arcades July 1981. It's one of the, f it is one of the wow. first shooters with a forced X axis scrolling. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Last few people do for a second there. Really colorful and beautiful. Yeah, lots of colors. Wow. Along with Konami's Scramble released earlier in the year. So Scramble came out first. And and there is Scramble by Champ Games for the 2600. Uh, players take control of the Avenger space fighter and use bullets and bombs to fight enemy forces. Yeah, making sure we're awake there. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It was way, way, way too. Long. Um, the game was ported to ColecoVision as one of its one of its launch titles in North America when the system was released in August 1982. Versions for other platforms were in development and advertised, but neither were officially released. And I think there was a announced for Atari. This this was. Uh, the ColecoVision port proved more successful than the arcade original, garnering mostly positive reception from the critics who praised the action, visuals, and gameplay. Um, and the world record is held by Wes Hupp with 117,290 points. 1982. Really? That must be broken right now. All those old records mm. are usually all broken. They, they they're usually, either, yeah. They're usually they're either lies... Or they've been broken. Nice. <laughs> a lot of them have been like, that's not even a possible score. Yeah. Like the score was recorded wow. as something, 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 10 points. Yeah. And when you play the game, there is no 10 points. Yeah, there's, there's no 50 way. There's 50 and 100 points. Yeah. So it's like, well, somebody's lying. Yeah. Or recorded it wrong. Um, 
Packard says, I played it on Coleco. This seems pretty well done. Well, this is the arcade. So this, this is the arcade. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. It is yeah. very well done. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, let's take a look at the Coleco, actually. Yeah, the colors of that game are beautiful. I'm looking at it going, I want to knit that into a sweater. Because <laughs> it's like that perfect pixelated bright color. Like you could just knit it into a wonderful Christmas sweater. It would take me like a decade to do, though. So probably not gonna happen but it's 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 quite beautiful like the colors in it are really really vibrant so i love those those early 80s games but this is what this is coleco uh this is emulated coleco oh it looks i smooth. see it's, it looks smooth enough yeah yeah yep. yeah it's very good still lots of color <laughs> scrolls pretty nice a little bit chunky yeah the d print says he'd buy that sweater yeah <laughs> yeah no it would be very cool it would just unfortunately take me like a decade so uh, click go 2600 yeah. showed an upcoming cosmic avenger in its catalog mm. that came with other released games oh let's see if i can look for that this is that is noisy yeah. audio sounds just just as good not as rich and full but uh the sounds are really good so let's see if I can find that advertisement. It's probably like a like hand drawn. A lot of the early video game screens were actually hand drawn. Hand drawn. Yeah, with like rulers and things. Oh, like I see. Yeah, faking yeah. Faking it. Yeah. Um, to pretend that it's like, oh yeah, this is what it looks like. <laughs> um, Cosmic Avenger. Let's see if I can find. Um, I'm always mildly terrified about about what the autofill is going to show up when you when you. Well, they can't see that. Oh, they can't see it. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not going to be typing random things. No, no, no. <laughs> um, uh, can't find it off the bat. If somebody else could, if somebody was is able to find Cosmic Avenger, we can kind of see it. They can see it. They can uh, see it in the reflection. <laughs> not enough, but you can. No, but it's just fun. Yeah, it's funny. Okay. Yeah. What is this? It is reminds that... me of the Wired Autocompletes where they do that with <laughs> celebrities. Yes. Um. That is not Cosmic Avenger. That is somebody naming their game Cosmic Avenger. Anyway, so that is Coleco and the uh, uh, arcade. So we're going to take a look at what Daryl Spice Jr. Oh, it's still going. <laughs> has done smoosh oh it doesn't smoosh it just goes straight through yeah why is it blue oh that's just oh can we not uh, reset it yeah. it changes colors does it yeah, oh. yeah. it is neat oh, it go. looks really good yeah it's really, got really nice. uh, play field scrolling yeah and then and you if you go further on the screen it goes faster you go back it goes slower if you warp warp around <laughs> it uh doesn't check um and it's got that nice beam going up yeah it's got the nice colors using the play field for coloring. It looks like he's using something else as well. Let me just, oh, I can't, not an emulator. <laughs> but it looks like the pink and the brown are on the same, or maybe it's on the same level. Mm. Don't know how he's doing that. That's my eyes are deceiving me. It is a little warpy, oh, the no, color. Oh, no, it is. It's, it's mushy. It's a little, a little bit mushy. mushy. So yeah. I don't think. I think it's just play field all the way up. Mm. But it does look very, very nice. Yeah. The ship looks great. The enemies look great. Well, Spiceware is in the uh, in the house. So, so. Mr. Fix, uh, you can ask him if he plans to finish it. <laughs> well, he... Uh, the What I've got for notes here when it was posted, mm. this was from 2000... Um, 2015 and zybot67 said i can't get enough of this game but while playing it yesterday i couldn't help but wonder if john this was under scramble which he did make um if john could also hack it into cosmic avenger he said comic avenger he already gave us one coleco's vaporware titles ladybug i'm in no way understanding programming and i don't want to derail this topic but i was just curious um and spiceware replied cosmic avenger was the original plan mm. But as happens from time to time, the plan changed. Kind of how like Frantic led me to this one little 50 sprite 
experiment, which ended up becoming finished while Frantic languished in the back burner. Someday I'll return to Frantic. I did this small tech demo for John to get him up to speed on coding DPC Plus with ARM support. This was actually the inspiration for my DPC Plus ARM development blog series. So Daryl Spice Jr. made this. Mm -hmm. He actually just posted that. Yeah. I, I missed that further up in the in the chat. John was going to port Cosmic Avenger sure. to the 2600 yeah. like he did Ladybug, but he wanted to use DPC Plus, so I made him this demo to get him started. Nice. But he didn't do Cosmic Avenger. He no. ended up doing Scramble. Yeah, so we basically have to peer pressure John to make Cosmic Avenger. <laughs> yeah. And... Because um, he needs more on his plate, but... And, and, he, <laughs> and he did respond. Yeah, okay. To, to me showing this go, up going okay, to show okay, this okay, i can't okay. remember what he said but he's like i'll add it to my stack yeah 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 i think um, after, after my the last the last he was he was in the chat for the last one oh, and he that's, mentioned it that's yeah. what he said it was add in the it, chat add that's, it. yeah because he said after the 10 plus games yeah yeah and he just announced a new game today wow champ sports baseball wow you missed it right you didn't today? see it yeah no, any of the screenshots so. anyway it no. looks gorgeous oh cool and he's going to um, be releasing for world premiere on this show mm. uh, an unannounced game just like oh. you did with Galagon nice um, and that's going to be happening on May 13th cool Wednesday May 13th cool oh you can go off the screen cool, to the cool, top cool. does it wrap around yep, yep. <laughs> well this is, all, this is only 255 so it's like and we're back on the screen mm. same with the front to the back Baseball, yes. Oh, did they find uh, the catalog? Can you click on that? And see what... Uh, Which one, the first? Yeah. Or, yeah, first, first. And you click the second one. Oh, scroll down. No, go back. Oh, okay. Venture, Cos Cosmic Avenger. Oh, I need to scroll down. Mm -hmm. Uh... This futuristic battle is fought between you and your ship and an advanced alien civilization. You must maneuver your ship over the complex enemy territory, firing as you go. Your goal is to destroy the enemy's installations while avoiding the relentless return fire. Number 2464 for the Atari video game, uh, video computer system, and Sears Video Arcade. So it was planned. It never came out. There's no screenshot. They just showed the, um, mm. the arcade cabinet. But they did. There, it was on the Coleco. Uh, yeah, so I, I do have it on the Coleco. Mm. And those are Coleco cartridges. Mm. But it says there for the Tari VCS. Uh, so it was planned. For both. And I guess it just yeah. never got finished. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. That is a funny, fun little venture Very into cool. what could be, what was, what was planned. And maybe, maybe in the future. In the maybe in the future, And, yeah. and he's finished, cool. finished Scramble in Super Cobra Arcade. So he can pretty much easily adapt it to... Mm -hmm. Well, not easily, but he can adapt it. And he would just have to make the maps, mm -hmm. the map screens, and fiddle with the rules a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Very, very cool. And we're going to move on to game number five, Spaceman Splorf. Nice. Which we're going to be going for... Um, the patch. Okay. And the first goal is 4,000 points. 4,000? And that's that gets you the patch for Spaceman Splorf. Nice. And 8,000 he posted. Well, let me read it, actually. Okay. Um, because we announced it on the show, um, last show, when I was gifted this wonderful box of Spaceman Splorf. Um, he announced that there was a patch, and we showed the patch, a uh, graphic of the patch. And he says, Become a member of the Golden Spanner 4th Class Engineer Group. Once you've gained competence in maneuvering your jetpack above Planet Doom, you can rocket your career with the Golden Spanner Award, achieve a score of 4,000 points or more, and you can be eligible to join this 4th Class Engineering Group Lavatorial Division. Nice. <laughs> Send us a picture of the TV displaying the Spaceman Splurf title screen with the high score. Note that the game must be played on a real Atari or Sears system, mm -hmm. not an Intellivision, not a Coleco with an add-on. Uh, has to be an actual Atari. Atari or Sears. Only those two. Okay. And the picture should include the high score along with the game system being visible. Um, while supplies last. And then use the customer service link at PackRadVG to be able to send your picture in. 
pack patch requires purchase of the cartridge from pack rat does this count i didn't buy it <laughs> i do have it otherwise proof of a, purchase. otherwise a small fee will apply proof of purchase do we have to cut out the back uh, <gasps> upc code no. and destroy the terrible destroy it yeah so we're going to open it up and use the actual okay. cartridge. I'm going to run out and come right back. So I Bye. apologize. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Oh, Packard says yes, it counts. Yay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I would think it's a play off of Spaceman Spiff from Calvin and Hobbes. And the instructions are a little homage to Red Dwarf as well because of the very low rank this person has um, within his organization. So we've got the cartridge here. Let's pop it in. Take out the Harmony cart. Ready. Pop over and listen to the amazing music. Get it down to a decent level. There we go. Spaceman Floorf. You can tell this is uh, somebody who does demos um, for the 2600. This is his first game for the 2600. He's programmed before on other systems. And Space Man's Plurf is actually available for the C64 as well. And it is a one button game. One button to start, one button to play. And you just have to avoid all the debris. Oh, oh, let's not go down there. Can be trapped. Now, I have not achieved a score of 4,000 points yet on this game, even when I played it last time on the show. Oh, God. Oh, that was really lucky. Um, but we'll see if I can get it. Because after a while, the rocks come fast and furious. Faster and uh, bigger. Not that the bigger matters too much, but... See? See how fast they're coming now? They come really fast, which makes it really hard. And the big hint, really, to survive in this is that you can control your... That was ridiculous. You can control your upward movement yeah. rather than your downward movement. So it's better to stay low. Packrat says, personally, I haven't gotten past 4,000. Red Dwarf The Promised Land airs tomorrow. Yes, it does. I am going to be watching it somehow, <laughs> some way. And uh, then buying it on. Uh, oh, you're done. Uh, it's the button to go up, and that's it. Oh yeah, just the button. you just avoid, right? I'm looking forward to the uh, new Red Dwarf uh, season thir season 13. Um, what do they call them? They don't call them seasons, do they? In Britain, what do they call them? Series series 13. That's what they call. Them. Oh. Nope, too high. No, can't I, go too I, high, can't go too you low. Can't, there's no sideways, it's just a one button just game, right? Yeah. It's Flappy Bird in Space. <laughs> I think I said that, yeah. <laughs> I think you're quoting me. I remember For lack of a better description. Yeah, it is Flappy Bird in Space. It's very cute, though. It really. Very good graphics. Like, the colors they've chosen on the rocks is unbelievable. Oh, it's beautiful. Because. The bottom of the rocks are reflecting the green on the planet. Oh, Jesus. No, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, are reflecting the green on the planet. Yeah. And I'd, I'd never really put those two things together. Yeah. Is that it's the green reflecting off the rocks. On the, and there's the stars going by at all different, actually not all different speeds. They're, each level is going at the same speed over and over again. Um, but the layers of the rocks really give it a nice depth uh, to the colors and, and the graphics on the rocks, the var variation of the graphics. There's like five or six different types of rocks. Really good. Oh, oh God, no, close. I should have stayed up. 1700. Ah! Who's the author of Spaceman Splorf? Sorry, I can't keep up. Yeah, uh, there's so many homebrews coming out all the time. Um, uh, programming by Andreas Gustafsson. Graphics by Vanya Utne and Alex Petro. Music by Vanya Utne. Um, so this is the only game that for the 2600 that this author has made. He has made a number of, at least one demo. Um, I, I'm pretty sure a couple demos for the 2600 before he made a game. 
and he's made this game on the C64. I'm not sure of what he's made on other systems besides Spaceman Scarf, um, but by the graphics and the music, you can tell he comes from 2175. It's very good. Comes from a um, a demo background because of especially the wave on the bottom. That's a very demo type wave. Mm -hmm. I want to see more demo games that are s simple and have really amazing graphics. <laughs> demo style yeah, right. games. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, like, like sim super simple like this. Like it's just oh. one button. Yeah. But the graphics and music are just over the top. Yeah. Like out of control. Be very cool. Uh, Packrat said uh, he did Splorf for the video pack as well. Mm -hmm. The parallax scrolling is great effect on the 2600. Luckily, the 2600 can do parallax scrolling really, really well. Mm -hmm. Because each layer on the 2600 is treated separately every line of pixels is its own thing because you have to tell the 2600 every line what to do and parallax is that kind of distance as you go up the screen um, so it's actually might be simpler than other systems to do parallax scrolling uh, Kev Kelly says this game looks amazing, simple but great gameplay. Yeah, very responsive, um, great graphics. The, the little guys like kind of. Oh, just a little too low. Twenty. Oh, we almost, almost got me. Almost yeah. <laughs> So close. Yeah, the little movement of the guy. Like, yeah. Bobbing his head. It's really really cool. I love. I yeah. I I just <laughs> I love everything um, about it. Anything with with beautiful gradation and color. Yes. Um, and gradation is very easy to do on the 2600. Yeah. It's like you have your graphic. It has no color when it's stored, right? Mm. And then you store the colors, the line colors, in another array mm. or whatever you say, list. It's not really an array. But in another list, you say, okay, line one graphics are this. Mm. Line one color is this. So if you look at the rocks, it's like kind of light towards the top. And then it gets darker and then a little bit lighter and then green. So it'd be like pixels and this color. Pixels, this color. A table. That's that's the right word for it. An array. A one-dimensional array. <laughs> well, technically a two-dimensional array if uh, you store them side by side. If you want eight bits. And then uh, eight bits, and then however many colors you need to store. Uh, one life only. Yep, it's one go at it. That's all you get. Just like in real life, when you lose your wrench. Maybe I should read out the instructions to this. I think it's pretty um, obvious. Well, it's got a, it's got a background. Back, yeah, the backstory. backstory yeah, that's it, so. that's a little bit. Ah, oh, twenty-seven fifteen. All right, I beat James. Oh, you did? Okay. Well, no, one more try, one more try. Okay. You you read out the story. Um, so my, la my last score was 2884 when we played it last. 2884. So I still haven't beat that, okay. which is terrible. Um, no, not terrible. Pack Rap posted today, um, we, we will have to see how many folks beat this score of 4,000. One person so far has beaten the snot out of it. I may mm. sneak in an extra perk for those that score uh, above 8,000. Did someone score above 8,000? Oh, yeah. Really? And it's the usual suspect. S. Ramirez, 2008. Of course. Uh, posted his score of 10,774. Oh. Um, and this game was nominated last year. Or this year. Um, but in, for the 2019 Atari Awards... Uh, Atari Homebrew Awards for Best Graphics, Music and Sound, and Best Packaging. So it was nominated for three three awards, as you can... I mean, deservedly so. Oh, so close. Okay. 27 The music is awesome. Yeah, the music oh, yeah. just... It's good stuff. Victor. So I have to... I have to get 4,000. I think it's doable. Oh, yeah. I think it, it is a little bit of luck. It is. And as you get further along, they start coming more dense towards you. It's a wall of and rocks it's, after it's, a while. It's a little bit of the luck of how far you get, but... Um, you have to watch for openings and watch for clusters. Yeah. That's the thing. 
You have to move across the screen. The unfortunate thing is if you do have to move really fast, uh, you have uh, you have momentum. So uh, yeah, so that can really that. screw you up. But sometimes you have no choice but to really like jump up really quickly or drop. And you hope there's no rocks there. And you hope, you hope you, yeah. But other than that, it's pretty simple. It's basically <laughs> Flappy Bird in space. Flappy Bird doesn't have as much momentum. Uh, is... No, Flappy Bird has a lot of ah. a lot of a, a lot of momentum. I thought. Depends on which goes, one you're playing. Yeah, the ones I've played are like uh, 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 a lot of gravity. Oops, they have a lot of gravity. Yeah, to but them. you have that. You have that. What do I want to say? The curve, the 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 movement. Yeah. This yeah. one is a lot less gravity. Yeah, but you're Very floating. You float floating. up and you stay up, or you go yeah. a lot higher than you would expect. So it's a small plane. Yes, it's a small plane. Half the gravity of Earth. Yeah. Or you're, you're, much less. you're around the moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's Planet Doom. Planet Doom? Yeah. Not Moon Doom. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's still a big celestial planet. Yeah, that could be moons bigger than planet. Ah! Uh, and that's, and that's what gets you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cafe Man TV sitting in my rocking recliner groove into this. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Nice. Yeah. I like the little alien dude too. Yeah, yeah, not human. It's got green, it's green got face. A green face. And great graphics with the the helmet, with the little space in between his uh, his face and the helmet. Yeah. The D train thirty seven says, "What is that up there? The heavy side layer, first field at top." I think it's like uh, the. Uh, oh my God! No. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's the. Um, I can't remember. It's in the instructions what it is. I was gonna say it's the. Uh, oh gosh. The fatal radiation <laughs> of the atmosphere. Could be spacesuit is not uh, suited for space yeah, up that high. He's uh, just 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 at the outer edges of the atmosphere. Yeah, I think the planet's made of acid or something. Mm. Yeah, it looks pretty acidy. It's like a ocean of acid. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go in there. Yeah. Astro Mirrors 2008 is like he, he just destroys, destroys every game. Yeah, he <laughs> yeah. He's so good. Yeah. In every type of game. Well, some people are naturally gifted, yeah. or just very stubborn. <laughs> yep. Or a, a combination of, of the two. <laughs> or has a lot of time to play video games. Oh. Uh, uh, two, five, five, six. You're not enough. Not even close to enough. Yeah. What is his uh, strategy? Is mine is try and stay low because it's easier to go up than float down. I, I try to in stay general. in the middle, so you have the option of going up or down. If you stay That's too true. close to the acid, then you're forced to go up, and if you're blocked, you're kind of you're kind of screwed. I mean, I try to bring him back to the middle if I can. It's true. Because there is but, six six rows of not six rows of non-overlapping rocks. Yeah. But it's kind of zen, like it is. It's you one just, of those games. Just, it's it's. We could quite easily just stop talking and just sit here staring at the screen for the next two hours because you just kind of get into the groove of it. Mm -hmm. So how is everybody doing with, oh god, isolation? <laughs> <laughs> Staying in their homes or working. Or, or not. Or risking Sometimes their lives risking out. Risking their uh, lives. Uh, or working. Where, out in the pandemic. Yeah. James stays home. I risk my life, so... Me, if I didn't watch the news and uh, didn't have Tanya, I would be like, what? What's happening? Because <laughs> I'm I doing exactly what I would normally do. Yeah, except not... you stay at home. You work from home. I'd be like, for the most part. Not not completely, though. I would just be like, why isn't Erlen coming over for the video <laughs> games? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's Erlen and down, Darcy? Down, down. Uh... Yeah, exactly. Uh... uh... Coming very fast now. And it's hard to get out of the way fast enough. No. Spiceware. Damn all it. Um. Oh. Yeah. Spiceware said already work from home. Just stop going out for meals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of us that work on computers is kind of in the same. Yeah. 
the situation. The D train says I'm I'm uh, in a grad program and it went to full distance learning, which has been really weird. Yeah. Yeah, it might be more a lot more. And it's more hard difficult. to concentrate on reading and homework when you're at home. Um, a lot of distractions. I have a friend who's who's working on her PhD and she works in a lab and the lab shut down, so uh, she's also living in a grad residence. And oh. she has to stay there because she's, you know, her family's originally from very far away. Right. Um, and she said they shut down all the kitchens. They oh were refusing to, to deal with the appliances. So what do you do? And they shut down the cafeteria. So on Microwave campus, everything? there's like two places they can buy food. Oh my God. Um, and then, yeah, she has a microwave. And I asked her if she had a hot plate, but she said she's a slow cooker or something. But it just sounds awful. Um... So I know she's struggling with that a little, but there are a lot of people, fortunately, who are still at the residence. So there are, you know, a few people around, but some. Um, Thirty-five yeah. twenty-seven. Yeah, working from home full time. Some, yeah, I used to do it once a week. Uh, yeah, Carl G, I'm getting a lot of quality time with two hungry teenagers. <laughs> Yeah, your sister has three teenagers. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard from her in the next little while. I was going to contact her yeah. to wish her a happy Easter. I'm hoping it's not like World War Three <laughs> over there right now. Yeah. They're probably just itching to leave the house. Yeah. The, the kids. Um, yeah. Not, they, they probably don't want to be at home. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want to be with my friends. I'm not sick. Let me out of the house. Yeah. Family's getting cabin fever. Yeah, it's tough. Uh... Young kids too, I have a friend who's um, looking after who, her two kids who are younger, who I would say are, I think one's, one's three and one's six. And then her sister is an ER doctor. And so she has her two kids. So he, she's basically taking care of four young kids at the same time. That sounds terrible. Um, because her sister really doesn't want to come home to the kids because she's worried about what she might bring home with her. So uh, I know she's uh, that's that's been challenging. <laughs> that's been challenging for her. Yeah, yeah. RC seventy says such a bad a bad death too. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough. And I, I did it. Oh, that four thousand! I wasn't even paying attention. We were talking about other things. In the game, okay, not the virus. Well, that's a bad desk too. Yeah. <laughs> um, the D train, is that a campus? The campus not near an urban center. Uh, she's out at UBC, which is actually kind of not exactly in the middle of the city. So yeah, it's it, it kind of sucks, but uh, yeah, it depends on where you are and what, what amenities you have. Damn it. Go for eight. Well, I was, and I will. Five, five, patch, patch, patch. Good job. Woo. <sighs> yeah, you can, you can. I could do it. eight. You I could do eight. eight. You think you could? Yeah, I it think kind of maxes out. You, you, you get in a groove, and I yeah. think you need a little bit of luck too. Oh, oh yeah, because you can go for an opening, and then a fast one just destroys. Just, just destroys you. I did die badly though. It was my fault on that one. I wasn't trapped. I just ah a bad decline. But you do get into a group, that's for sure. But uh, my experiments oh. with Post. getting somebody in on the laptop, like Erlen or Darcy, were not going well. They were going okay, but not good. So I still have to play around with that, and mm -hmm. I still do want to do that. Um, so I've done it with both three them. times, three and, times? And, and another time doing something else. Um, none of them went perfectly. That's the problem. Is it just that the video is not... It was different problems each time. Yeah. Were they using different systems to video in? It, it's not relevant. No? No. Because it just takes whatever audio and video are on that screen and just sends it in. Oh, I see. So, so it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, it's but Erlen was having all kinds of robotic voice things, and I was wondering uh, that if was that was his, the application. He it was. was. It was. Yeah. It's nothing to do with the technology. No. No, 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 no. So I have to solve my technology issue. And he was fine by the end. Yeah. Um, but it's the problem that we have to hear him. Just like the issue with we have to hear the video game, but we can't have it loud because it comes back through the microphone. And unless he is synced up. Oh, no. You can't divert once you 
float. <laughs> no, unless he is synced up perfectly with himself from what we hear and what they hear. There's either a reverb or there's a delay, which is unbearable. <laughs> um, I'm able to do it with a, an earpiece, but then you can't hear it. That's, oh. that's a problem. Um, and that's not, not workable. And I can't also do it with just him because, well, I could, but it's just not, it's not good. I'd rather have somebody else here playing the games because then I'm not the only one playing the games. I can leave the room if you insist. I don't want you. <laughs> I'm saying I don't want you to leave the room. That's leave, the thing. Have another beer, have a snack. No, back no, back. I don't want you to leave the room. <laughs> I want somebody here with me that can play video games while I'm going through things and talking. Or talking, yeah. yeah. Ah! Oh, I have to press it harder. Uh, my special friend's D train, my fresh special friend's son in college is in a teeny tiny town between Montreal and the U.S. border. Mm. They sent all those kids home. I mean, it makes sense that they go home and not stay yeah. in a place that they're not with family anyway, and they'd want to be home, especially when they're not doing anything. Uh, Gretem says, we took advantage of the beer pickup tonight. Walked to the brewery a few blocks away and they met us outside. Felt felt mildly illicit. <laughs> it was fun then. Yeah. <laughs> felt like old school. It's like, yeah, you want the beer, man? That's that's. Give me the money. That's what Here's we did with beer. our cat food. Because yeah. we buy it from the vet and the vet basically comes out back and, <laughs> and delivers it to your car, which again feels like you're buying illegal cat food or something. <laughs> It's but the good stuff. It's the good stuff, yeah. It, it actually is the good stuff. <laughs> it's cats, way too expensive way for those too cats. Expensive. But, but it like gives them an extra year or two for sure. Yeah. Because well, it, it prevents Pixel, crystals. Yeah, Pixel had some urinary crystal issues. So yeah, it's nobody to wants prevent those. that new poor little kitty had to get a catheter. Yeah. Was not a happy time. No. no. Oh, too that's tight. a rough too tight. Go. Um in so. a world where cats are illegal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it feels like that sometimes. It was the opposite for uh, Isle of Dogs, right? Dogs were illegal and cats were fine. Yeah, cats were mean. But they're mean cats. Mean, evil cats. <laughs> all of them? Yeah, they were all always the they were always associated to to the evil chairman or. Right. I think they were always kind of happy the dogs weren't were well, in uh, yeah. Japan. Yeah. That was a cute movie. I like that movie a lot. I know you're not a fan of uh, Wes what's his Wes Anderson, but it's just too too stylized for you. Cutesy and stylized. Oh, ah, you could have made it out yeah. of that. Yeah. No, no, I was. I probably... liked him at first. I thought, oh, this is cool and different. But then, is all the movies just feel so samey? They're all in the same kind of universe where everyone's I, quirky. I I, I get. Oh, quirky. Now, see, I'm just screwing up. Um, we do quirky things and say things quirkily I and dress it. quirky. I get that. And I get that we for all the talk movies. Really fast. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of the animations he's put out because I, I I really like the style of them. And yeah, it is still quirky, but I like his. I really like that kind of stop motion animation. The like animation's the, the amazing. The Fantastic Mr. Fox and the Isle of Dogs, I thought were really, really, really wonderful films. They look good. And it works even better, the quirkiness works even better in animation, I, I think. They do. Oh, see? Bad choice. And people who play Atari on Twitch are not quirky. <laughs> good we're point. We're not quirky. Good point. We're geeky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very different. Yeah. Very different. We're a subgenre of a subgenre of yeah. a subgenre. We're a gamer. We're a gamer on Atari 2600. Yeah. We're a gamer on Atari 2600 who only plays homebrew. Well, not only, but. 99.9% yes. .9 plays homebrew. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty much only plays homebrew. So, okay, maybe a bit quirky. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, oh just sometimes. One man's quirk is another man's geek. D train yeah, says. Yeah, yeah. We're quirky with a capital K. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that movie. Was it good? Uh, oh, we already talked about it. Which one then? Uh, Isle, Isle of Dogs. Dogs. I really liked it. I liked it. Visually unbelievable. Yeah, it's a beautiful film. Um, the ending was like action oh, for cute. action's sake. It was like we're on a crazy roller coaster it's, kind of thing. It's um, just nonstop action for 
no reason. Um, I can't even remember the ending, but I well, just they're remember in a cart. they're on like a cart. And they're, oh, like, going oh, forever wow. for like twenty minutes on this cart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I like this game. <laughs> um, but uh, I didn't. I didn't really like. It's supposed to be funny, right? A it's cute. Bit. It's cute. It's funny. It's cute. It's a little bit dramatic. But it's really from. But it's like it's what not I, funny enough. No, it's no, not dramatic no. Enough. I'm sorry. I disagree with you. And what I really like it's about definitely it. Definitely quirky. It's quirky. And um. Lost by a toe. Yeah. All the dogs. Oh, your helmet. All the dogs speak English. Yes. And it's set in Japan. <laughs> yes. So they can't understand the humans. They basically speak two different languages. See, I'm just talking You're about done. movies now. You're done. Um, uh, which I thought was brilliant. Yeah. Because, because they have their own language and the humans have their own language. Yeah. And they have little translators and, and, and quirky things in it. Dog to human. Um, and language. then they have, they have some, uh, like an, uh, an American in Japan translating like the news bulletins. Mm. And I just really like the whole way how that... That was very cool. Yeah, very I, I, it's very smart. Um, so whole... James, don't listen to his complaining. <laughs> I highly recommend it. I'm probably an outlier. Yeah. Um, yeah, not as good as... Yeah, Packrat says not as good as Fantastic Mr. Fox, but still good. I really liked I, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Too. I like Dial-Up Dog better. Did you? Yeah. I, I, I like both of them. I, Fantastic Mr. Fox is just so quirky. Well, I don't... Rem I, it's funny, I remember quirky. more from Isle of Dogs... Maybe because I found it more interesting than Fantastic Mr. Fox. I remember it the is. movie a little bit more. So. It is. It's more interesting, but I think. Anyway. The um, and, and the title of the film is a play on words. I love dogs. Yeah. Isle of dogs. Yeah. Which was, which was very clever. Yeah. There's a lot of cleverness in that film. I, I just, and I really liked how they dealt with the dogs not being able to communicate with humans. Yes. I just thought that was so brilliant. It was. Yeah. Like literally, they speak different languages. <laughs> I I just English and Japanese. English and whoa, Japanese, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, awesome. I really like that. Yeah, the secret to this is knowing how long to press your button and how to that well. How to maintain your distance between two. Boulders, oh my god. Almost Ooh, made it through. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> um, and how to sneak through boulders like that. <laughs> yeah. You really have to know how to do that, because yeah. you'll be called upon to do that. Yeah. Because it's going to be a some roll really of them tight, coming. Really tight movements, yeah. 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 You have to learn all the tricks. He trains says, you know what David St. Hubbins said, there's a fine line between clever and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, there's some truth to that, for sure. And... The movies are not stupid for sure. Oh no, no they're no. extremely but well done. You, you just, I just don't, don't like that genre. Well, I think I think you're turned off by the how stylized it is. Yeah, it's, it's too much. It's 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 very very it's, stylized. His his approach and how he likes to make films and the quirkiness of it, and it just doesn't appeal to you, which really, is totally fine. Really, really, really colorful. At least his films are. Yeah. Um, the stop motion is not as colorful, but um, no, everything's center frame all the time. Yeah. On purpose. Yeah. Everything's like laid out on the screen perfectly. There's no messiness. Actually, Isle of Dogs is is, is more of an outlier there because yeah. it's very messy and not um, so perfect. Yeah. And centered. All the rest of his other movies are like everything's purple in this room. Yeah. The desk is right in the center. The of art. The art design is really. Um and we're going to be right. able to show the whole side of the house because we built a whole set, the whole side of the submarine. And it's like, yeah, that's really, really well done, but I just don't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I want the 8,000 thing. <laughs> don't know what the thing is, but I want to get there. What did I get? Five thousand? Oh, I didn't. I didn't see what the last. Oh, your final score was. No, yeah. my, my big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Five something. Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't think this supports Atari Vox. I haven't so, heard any Atari, yeah, Atari Vox. Well, you don't hear. It. Um, sometimes it's mm -hmm. just for score, and they don't. Use oh, the to save. I see. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's called the save key part of the Atari Vox. Mm -hmm. You can buy a save key separately for a lot cheaper, like fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. You don't want the voices. You just want to save high scores. 
And I was, uh, talking in the forums about, um, my new Atari box and the old one, and that I have a bunch of high scores on the old one. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, well, they're, they're not on the new one. They're no. Yeah. And, and, um, Thomas Yanch, I think, was talking about it, and, like, oh, oh that, that was, was tight. That was tight. Totally yeah, but it was tight. That, that it was, was a tough one. Um, that theoretically, you could plug the Atari box into port one, the old one, and plug the new one into port two, okay. and have a program that reads all the memory locations on the first one, mm -hmm. and writes them all to the memory locations on the second one. Okay. And copies it all over. In theory. In theory. Nobody's yeah. made that. That's, that was my point. <laughs> but, but you could. I would assume it's not that hard for a, even a medium experienced programmer. Because just to copy and paste. Yep, it's read, write, mm. read, write, and all the instructions are there on the internet to, to do that. Um, and I also was talking, I think, last episode um, about oh my God. Um, two Atari Twenty Six Hundred talking with each other. <laughs> Um, through the port, because you can read and write on a joystick port, mm -hmm. right? And if you have two Atari 2600, both of them can read and write and therefore communicate with each other. Um, so you could have a head-to-head -head gaming mm -hmm. on two 2600s with two different screens. Um, even in a turn-based game, maybe if it's not fast enough to do... Come on. No, sometimes... Maybe it's not fast enough to do real-time, or not intense real time, but you could at least play like Battleship or Checkers or anything. Like you could retrofit. Mm. Well, you wouldn't need to do it with Checkers. Or anything. You'd have to have. It would be better with Battleship. That would be a very good example because you have to make moves that you don't want the other person to see, mm. and you have to have your board, lay out your board. Um, but like sports games, where you could pick on the screen what type of, you know, say baseball to throw like high left low battleship would be interesting just to create a game that utilizes the atari box mm, where where you have the battleship. ai where you have you're playing against the ai and the atari box says oh, you yes. know hit miss oh yeah a2 you sunk my battleship yeah oh my god there's an cool. idea yeah <laughs> for somebody yeah there's lots of ideas yeah James, not, get on it! Not enough programmers. You keep you keep saying you want to create a game. I do. You have lots of free time. <laughs> no, I wish I did. Um, this I have to still promote my movie because <laughs> people need to know about it and mm -hmm. buy it. So that's what I've been busy with. Yeah, and and, and filling your time with uh, the this. odd uh, stream too. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Two streams a week. Oh, and speaking of that. Uh, I'm planning on going to Sundays and Wednesdays for the next little bit until we're back to normal because it works better for me and also we're able to do a morning show on a Sunday with you mm -hmm. um, because Thomas Yanch was like, thank you for doing the Sunday show for the morning. Mm. Does that work okay for you, Sunday morning, 11 a.m.? Me? Yes. Oh, me. I thought you were asking them. Oh. The brand then. Uh, yeah, no, no, that works for me. Yeah. Sunday, Sunday mornings is, is fine, and oh um, in some ways it's easier. Ah! Oh, you're very close. Uh, some ways it's easier than rushing home from work and like yes. eating quickly and, and, and yeah. doing the show. So, but I know um, because the other Europeans, and Australians. Well, yeah, like when when you do it with Erlen and Darcy, you usually do it during the day. Yeah, and, and so yeah. you've been cutting off all those people who are around in the day to watch. Whole bunch of because people. Because I can only I have to do it once I get home from work. So, yeah. um, or finish my at home work day. So. All the non North Americans. Yeah. But this way, if it's on the weekend, it's, it's the North more Americans. Yeah. The North Americans can also tune in yeah. as well because yeah. it's on a weekend. Yeah. So yeah. Kind of Sundays works. are hard for people sometimes just because of things they're doing, sure. but um, oh. kids and... Oh, my foot. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no. It's all good. Uh, Carl G says it should be pretty simple. Oh, yes. Carl G would be the person that would be able to do... Uh, <laughs> to transfer over To transfer scores. over. Yeah, because I haven't yeah. really made any uh, big scores on my new one yet. I did. What was it? What did I get 305 on that I was really, really happy with? Um, oh. 
care about it. Last show, what was it? Oh. And somebody said, oh, that's the highest score yet in the world. <laughs> uh, come it was on. fun you were doing, Lala. Page. I only have one big score on there. Oh, it was Tower... Uh, Tower Ru of Rubble. Tower of Rubble, I got 305 points. Oh, come um, on. So that's the only real score I have on there, but it, I, I think I could get that again. But I would love to transfer over all my other scores safely, which is always a concern. It's like, oh, there's a bug. Oh, destroyed everything. Sorry. <laughs> I believe in... I believe in you, Tanya. You can do it, Gretem says. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I feel like it's doable, but... There you go. Oh. There you go. I'm still trying to figure out where to, where my eyes should be. Is that a weird thing to say? No. Like, uh, how much of the field I need to be staring at? Sometimes you need to take it all in at once as, as one big kind of I feel scene. like my eyes are just going really blurry, and I'm just yep. trying to... that's what I do, too. And it's it's fine because you can't concentrate on one thing. I'm not thing. sure it's good for my vision. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> but... Probably terrible because your eyes are not focused. Ah! Oh, I should have gone down. Sometimes it's like. Mm, I bought it via Amazon. Now it's the only other movie besides Sonic the Hedgehog on our playlist. A bit awkward cover for the three-year-old. Oh, my film. Yeah. Oh, okay. This. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit like what is that yeah i got mad at him <laughs> when he first came out with uh, his promotional material because i really wanted to like bring some cards to work oh and and i'm like i i really i really can't like well there is a shadow version of it no that still was not good no enough. i i it's about models i i i it's just one of those things where it's like i'm not sure this is <laughs> i'm gonna get pulled into someone's office so hr for you yeah i'm like i'll just tell you about the film and yeah, uh word of mouth yeah. The victim ah. went blind due to overplaying Space Mouse yeah. Floor. <laughs> yeah. 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 Passed out from lack of food, mm -hmm. trying to get the path score. Well, you only need one hand, so you can. Sure. You well, well, not that you can play very well. You can feed your face with your left hand, so. That's right. Yeah. I like games like that. <laughs> Where you can eat and play. Eat and play at the same time. As long as it doesn't make so a mess few of a games joystick. nowadays. Most yeah. you need the complete use buttons. of both hands, including a trigger finger. You've gotta work the D pad and the joystick. Yep. It's ridiculous. Um you've been playing uh, Zelda. Zelda on the Switch. Yes. How's and that been going? Uh, do I really need to explain that? You heard how Cheating. angry I was getting. Cheating. I was getting really angry the other day. Okay, my turn. She was <sighs> cheating, too. I had to. <laughs> she was stuck. I was like, I was stuck at one point. I'm like, oh, I don't know. But I was getting very frustrated. There was a... Um... I, I need to get better at the combat. That's what I figured uh... out, is that, that um, I kind of, I kind of like just running around and building things and making mm. things and, um... And I, I haven't, it hasn't really settled into my brain the um, the combat mechanisms with targeting, and uh, I just need to find a bunch of easy, low level bad guys and just just practice. Grind? Yeah, and because because um, I'm not doing very well with that, and uh, mm. I'm getting really frustrated. So, but I really I, I like the game. I like the game. Um. Yeah, it's called Minecraft. Uh, yeah, I, yeah I, Minecraft. I am you someone build? who 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 does who does like grinding. I really enjoyed the Fable series of games because you just grind a lot in those. But um, but generally, I like RPGs and I like I like games that involve a lot of um, puzzles and uh, the shrines and things like that in uh, Zelda are really good. Um, but my my combat skills are are a little underdeveloped. I need to practice. You get a, you get a little bit panicky. I get very angry when I get <laughs> frustrated. I get very angry. It's it's a genetic, <laughs> genetic thing, yes. characteristic. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does run in the family. No. Yeah, you came upstairs. And you're like, wow, you get just like your sister when you get angry, and I'm like, that's not helping. <laughs> 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 not gonna make me any less angry. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Fable like the comic books. Um, no, the Fable series. I think they were usually on Xbox. Um, Fable, Fable. I played Fable. Did they two and three? Yeah, we have one, but I don't think. I, I tried it. one, but it was a little rudimentary. I, I didn't really get it's into it. It's hard to go back. <laughs> it is. Where um, your decisions change the look and how other NPCs and other characters in the game um, treat, you. treat you and what quests you do and you can be good or evil. That, that was a big feature of those games. Mm. Yeah. Damn it. I haven't played them in a while, though. Well, you finished them, right? Yeah. And you get scars. Mmm. You get like red scars the more evil things you do so your appearance actually changes over time but i have to say i'm inherently when it comes to games like that i i can't i can't be like the bad murdery person like i just it's not in me even though i know it's just a game <laughs> i can't be mean to people oh, i don't no. know why neither can i I'm not very good at that. Sometimes I'm like, I'm gonna play this game and I'm gonna be really like chaotic evil and then I always end up being just The only time I do that is when character. I save and then I go kill a bunch of people and then I turn off the game. Yeah. <laughs> I will not save it to No. That. I it's wish just... that happened in real life. Yeah, everyone displayed their, their evilness. Oh yeah. Um just big red, red veiny <laughs> tattoos all over their body. I think that's what happened, but anyway. Yeah, it's been a while since I've played those games. Good job, good job. Thank you. And yeah, but fa um, Zelda has mm. been pretty good. I've never been a massive Zelda fan. Like, I, some people are super into those it. games, but never played a lot of them, really. Almost caught my toe on that one. That was good. Come that was toe. good. 7224. Oh. 7224. Might not be 8, but that is good. No, it's that not is 8. Good. <laughs> it's not 8. Stupid toes. And I was doing <laughs> so sense. well. That was a bad death. Uh. Like, uh. Needs better footwear. <laughs> It is random. Like I could die right now because of a well, bad some, rock. Sometimes, I mean, it is more spaced out, but but it is random. What like, comes flying at yeah. you? Yeah, could be a row of rocks. You could and be you're like, you mm, could be totally dead. cornered. Nobody could survive that. Yeah. Which is fine. Ah. Yeah, like that. Like, Ooh, like that, that was, was really, really really lucky. Oh, that was tight. It was yep. tight. Sometimes there was a it's line just of tight. them coming up yep. the top, and I had to go down, but I was already heading up. <laughs> Maybe do an edit where the rocks are Calvin or Calvin's <laughs> spaceship as as uh, a Spiff. Ooh. Spaceman Spiff, yeah. Yep. Change the Spaceman yeah. outfit. That would be good. The face. With uh, blonde spiky hair. Ah. And a uh, striped yeah. black and red shirt. Yeah. Is it black and red? Although I don't believe, what was it, Watson? Watson? Who makes it, uh, likes anyone using his, uh, their images. No. No, he does not. No. Uh, he doesn't like him selling them. Selling, I guess. He definitely yeah. doesn't like him selling them, but yeah. he... Is it Watson? Bill, Bill Watterson. The Watterson, that's it, um, yeah. I knew I was close. I don't know what he said about, like, people just drawing them and just using them, but not it's, selling them. It's he, one thing to use it, it's another to sell, yeah. Yeah, because he never... He 
never made any merchandise. No. Zero. He was really dead set against it. Yeah, and there was people approached him to make a movie or a, a animation out of it. Yeah. And he's like, I, d I don't want to hear his voice. Yeah. He so oh, he just his... never wanted it to be anything but a comic strip and yeah. book compilation. I, I mean, that's good. I, I yeah. respect someone who has a... The purity a, of the art. The, right? Well, the purity of the vision of what he wants, right? Yeah. Like, it's his it's his uh, creation, so... Yeah. Never made any stuffed dolls. Nope. He made one well, calendar once. That's it. Oh, just one? Yeah. Wow. I think that's the only merch he's ever made in uh, Kathy oh, Man come on! Kathy Man TV, can you always beat the patterns if you're quick enough, or do you inevitably run into an unavoidable trap of boulders? I haven't seen any that I think are completely unavoidable, but you you just have to time it perfectly, and sometimes that's very difficult, but... You... Yeah. Some... I, I don't think there's, a like, a solid wall at any point that you can't make it through that I've ever seen, but... If there's a boulder coming for you and then you go around it to avoid it, you could go the wrong way up mm. rather than down. And then And then when you're going up, there's a wall of them coming. Yeah. yeah. And then you're just like, I picked the wrong direction. Yeah. I, couldn't. I could have gone down and I but would I, have avoided but it. But you can't but, yeah. anticipate that. That's the thing. Like no. that, that came really fast. I could not move out of I could go up. Yeah. That's the way if, I, if you had if you had dropped faster then you would have avoided it, but, but you couldn't. can't once you see dropping. it sometimes, yeah. I would have had to um, press up right there. Yeah. <laughs> Packrat VG. James, calm, calm. Float amongst the gasteroids. <laughs> um, no calm. Yeah. Cafe Man TD, do you know what character in Calvin Hobbes looks just like Bill Watterson? Yeah, his uncle. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I am a huge Calvin fan. Hobbes. Yeah. <laughs> of all the books. I think we have. He's my, one of my heroes. Almost Bill all, of, all of the books. I have all the books. Do we have all of them? Yeah. yeah. Except for the the limited edition book one that he wrote mm. um and he used to sign um sign his books in the library in his hometown yeah. then people started stealing them so he Aww. stopped doing that um, he doesn't give any interviews no even in the documentary made about him he's not in it <laughs> no because they couldn't get an interview with him it's just like I, I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm retired. And he didn't make any more comic strips after that. No. Just nothing. He's because he's super rich. He would be. Well, from as rich comics. As, rich as you can be from selling books. Which yeah. He sold a ton of books. Well, he did sell a ton of books. Yeah. Which is amazing when you think about it. I don't think many yeah. artists can say that that's how they make their money anymore. No. <laughs> just by selling their art, you know, just by selling yeah. comic strips or selling books. So. Pretty, only, pretty rough gig. Only rivaled by Garfield and the Far Side. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Those are probably the other yeah. big sellers of compilations. Probably Doonesbury too. Oh, I press up. 5,000. Didn't even know it was that high. Yeah, pretty good. Wow. PG. Calvin has been in the online Bloom County. Online Bloom County. Oh yeah, because they went online. Mm -hmm. He has? How? Because the um I guess the other guy drew him. Oh really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they uh artists have swapped um like they take over each other's comic strips mm -hmm. and draw it in their style, mm -hmm. but with the characters of the comic strip. Mm -hmm. Uh, D-Train said so he did art for a hell? few days for Pearls Before Swine. There you go, yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's a stupid mistake. I am definitely, I have not read a comic strip in a very long time, so... It's just not a thing, like, nobody well, gets papers anymore, except I mean, for your parents. Other than, like, the oatmeal, but even that is, is feeling older now, I mean, that... The oatmeal I haven't read in a long time. XKCD. Yeah, I used to I used to read I used to every day. go all the time and I don't quite as much anymore. Yeah. I've stopped reading the oatmeal and XKCD. Yeah, I still like the oatmeal. Oh, they're both amazing. Yeah. I don't know, I just, there was just all of a sudden I just stopped reading all the online comics. Yeah, it's sad. I don't know why YouTube took over. Yeah. My maybe. life. So, God, so much content on YouTube. <laughs> 
None of it good. <laughs> Some of it good. Some of it good. Mostly just. Oh. Yep. Okay. Oh, it's new. 2014. That's newish. Calvin's dad. His his uncle looks more like him, I think, than his dad. But yeah. Uh, Kathleen Tudi, I uh, semi disagree that Al Calvin's uncle Max, who rep most represents Watterson. Huh. Need that eight. Need that eight thousand. So close. I know I could do it. It's just a matter of luck. Or just going the right way accidentally, more than. I mean, it's pretty much equivalent to luck. The picture's really clean tonight. It's on, not bad. on the Atari, there's no interference. Uh, Maybe it's because it's a black more... background. Uh, Red right anti chewing. No. You chose poorly. I chose poorly. <laughs> Cards in here. Um, you are Splorf, Space Corps Sanitation Engineer, fifth class, Lavatoria Division. I think on Red Dwarf it's fourth class and third class. Um, sanitation? Oh, is it? Let me look that up. Oh. And Rimmer is third class and Lister's fourth. Second technician. Just third technician. They uh, clean out uh, vending machines. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's their job. And uh, Rumor's in charge of Lister. Mm -hmm. And he's second technician. He's second. So he tells tells Lister what to do. So this guy's a fourth? This guy's... Fourth class. Fourth class. Fifth class. Sanitation oh. engineer. Sanitation. So much worse. Lavatorial division. He cleans the bathrooms. Aww. A small yet vital cog in the corporate machine. You're good at your job. Another 20 years and you could possibly make fourth class engineer. But today your mind is on other things other, uh, is on things other than your job. The rumors have reached even the lowest levels of methane station. So that's a methane uh, planet it looks like. You're harvesting methane. Uh, that doesn't sound like a good job. The harvest ships have returned from the latest run to the Doom system with more than just gas. They brought disastrous news concerning the defense defensive system protecting Space Corps' interest from planets uh, from space pirates and fierce competitors. Mm -hmm. ah, ah, ah. 1974. You there, a middle manager shouts at you. Commander Splix needs a volunteer. Get your lazy plarp up to level 17 immediately. As you step into the turbo lift, you nervously repeat the creed to yourself. This is my spanner. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Oh, jeez. Yeah. It's full metal jacket. Full reference. metal jacket. A lot of references in this game. Very cute. The rumors were true. Exploding gasteroids have damaged the disintegration fence above planet Doom. So that's a disintegration fence. Mm. And they've entered it, but the dis disintegration fence is still active, apparently. They've entered it far the way, far down the, uh, down the line. Um... And Commander Splix wants you to fix it. So you're on your way to fix the opening in it down the way. And it's a beautiful glowing purple at the top. It's just gorgeous colors. Oh, right. Working Dang. quickly to fix the damaged shield generator before the evil space pirates steal the precious gas resources from the planet below. You suddenly see your company-issued spanner drifting off towards the planet. Misplacing company property result in a, your paycheck being docked or being sent to work to the support mines. Not a tempting prospect. 
Using your jetpack, you desperately follow the spanner into a particularly pungent gastroid field, just as now, as the now fully operational disintegration fence above you turns itself back on. Oh, so disintegration fence is actually fixed in the game. And that's why it's back. But the asteroids are already in there. Too bad you can't just push them into the disintegration fence. That'd be cool. But somehow they're avoiding the gravity. <laughs> and you can't. Um, there's logical inconsistencies with this game. Oh. 2671. Yeah. Um, That's Ramirez. Go James. Go James. Oh, the now fully operational disintegration fence keeps the interference out for the game. Yes, it is doing a very good job. Yes. <laughs> Pressing the joystick button in the game will make Sporth move upwards, away from the planet's surface. Letting go of the joystick button will make Sporth yes. drop towards the planet. So technically, he could have two jetpack movements. One is just seems like gravity, because the rocks are not going. Press the joystick button of the game over screen to restart for another game. Always appreciated that the uh, title screen, you're allowed to press the joystick button to start the game and not have to reach over. Ah, just a little too high. One more. One more and then One I'll give more. it a go. You want another go? Yeah. You, what did you make, 7,000 and something? Yeah, I'd like to make 8,000. You did make four, so that's good. Yes, first goal accomplished. I have to say, it's a joy to do it on a screen like this. <laughs> a big screen? Well, yeah. Rather than a 13 inch black and white television? Yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't really seen an uptick in programming or development for the 2600 during this uh, well, isolation no, period. It doesn't mean they're releasing yet. True, they could be all be starting it and it's or, just not at a level yet. Their families are all driving the nuts at home. That's the That's other true. <laughs> not, uh, not allowing them peace and quiet. Mm. That's a definite possibility. Mm -hmm. You can't get those teenagers out of the house, you know? It's like, ah, oh, I'm trying to make a game! <laughs> get out of here! Yeah. Go to your room! Do you have a CRT setup to play off stream? Damn it! Uh, we have a number of CRTs, although I think most of the time we play on this. On All this. the time. Yeah. yeah. Right. We never play on the CRT. No. Unless we have a retro game night with friends yeah. over, which probably won't happen for a while now, but... Um, uh, still be and in the we'll fall, pull out the fall. CRTs and the Vectrex and a few other all the other systems. Fun things. Yeah. Um, no, because then I have to hook up a. Well, I wouldn't with this mod, but uh, if it was unmodded, I have to oh get out the VCR as well. Mm. So I can change it from RF to composite because it's not actually a television that I have. It's um, a Commodore monitor. Two Commodore monitors, which don't take channel inputs, they take composite and kind of a funky S video input. It's not really S video. Uh, I do have a mod for it, uh, so the C64 can plug into an S video. That's like totally getting off track um, <laughs> because the C64 has higher than composite. Higher than composite output, it has like an S video like because it came up before S video, mm -hmm. but it does separate uh, the video signal like an S video uh, signal does. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just a little off spec, so you need like a resistor in line to take it down to spec. And I have and I have one of those cables, so I can plug my uh, Commodore into my Frame Meister's S video input and have quite a good um, signal if I ever wanted to play my Commodore mm. through my Frame Meister and capture something. Maybe capture some games I made a long time ago. Mm. Come on! Go down, down. <laughs> <sighs> the 
last time I booted up my C64, all the discs worked. The discs from the mid 80s were all still really? working. Yeah. Wow. Which is unbelievable. Was that 35 years? Mm -hmm. So it's just amazing. I mean, they've both been kept in decent storing conditions. conditions. I think they were in our storage. Yeah, for a while. Yeah. Which was. It, it was not cold, but it wasn't it, wet or. It wasn't temperature monitored in the sense that if it got really cold, I don't think it was. I think it was heated but not cooled. But yeah. Um, but in Vancouver, but not it humidity get that control. Hot. Not humidity control. So no. they were kind of out in the open, pretty much. Yeah. I'm so surprised. <laughs> yeah, it's surprising. Now they're all in in the house, with good temperatures mm -hmm. and normal humidity for. Ah. Smush, smush. Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> Indoors Vancouver. Oh, your score was a good score? No, Did you yours, get a good one? Yours. Oh. Yours is over 7,000. It's not eight. <laughs> so <laughs> that's all He's I aiming care for about. eight. You got over four, so he's got the patch. Yeah. Which I'm happy, but I want to get the bonus with the patch. <laughs> <laughs> and not waste. Uh, David's time having to send the bonus next time. <laughs> or maybe you don't even get the bonus. You either ask for the four or you ask for the eight. You can't get both. You can only get it once. <laughs> and it's probably one patch per game, so even if... Oh, come on! So even if you get four, we have to share it. <laughs> it's one patch per, per cartridge. Game. That's okay. I'll aim for a four. Welcome to the club, he says. Thank you. Yes. But I want to be hey, in the catches. elite club. The elite club. So I know Dan Kitchen's going to be offering multiple patches for, his for different scores. Nice. Um, for his uh, Gold Rush game. So I just want to get the highest, highest score possible before submitting, right? Then they don't have to waste their uh, postage sending multiple patches. But I imagine he's going to set the score very high for the hard ones. Yes. Oh, down, 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 down. Ooh, that's good. I went down. Yeah. Because there was a row of three. So that's the exact type of situation where it's not impossible. You just make the wrong choice. And, and then you suddenly don't know. you're stuck. Yeah. You don't know you made the wrong choice. Oh, smack. My toe. <laughs> so many tops of helmets and tips of toes being to D train up. Maybe you get a big Joe Exotic style sequin jacket for 8,000 points. Uh, we just finished watching that. <laughs> we did. Yeah. It's a train wreck. Yes. It was nice. It was. It looked nice. You mean the documentary? the documentary? It was well put together in terms of looks. Yeah. In terms of a story, it's just. Um, Crash TV yeah. turned into a documentary, uh, but an upscale documentary. Well, from I don't know if it's upscale. I think people like it because it is an upscale. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's 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 reality. TV. It's reality TV on a bigger scale. Yeah, and somebody just happened to be filming madness. Yeah, um, and not it's even madness. happened to be filming. A lot of it, I think, is archive footage, and the like. The filmmakers sort of. Ex explain it at the beginning of the film it's like what they're doing there it's like oh i was filming about turtles or snakes amphibians because i looked up his um the movies he's made before he's made like five movies about turtles really yes the guy who made that documentary yeah he's made a bunch of turtle movies really <laughs> and that's what he explains oh, at the beginning I was, oh i was looking at snakes because he has more than just tigers he has snakes, wow. and, snakes and other oh my god they're yeah. pixel away snakes and and um, lots of different things yeah um and he's like oh and then then he showed me this tiger that was in this van and then he started filming yeah. But when he came, when did he come into it? Like when was that? That would be interesting. Interesting to know. Because I don't know if he he, was... he went mining for f other oh, people's he footage. He did. You know yeah. that guy that was in the diner? Yes, who was That's talking like about crazy looking. He, yeah. he was doing the reality show about him. Yeah, he must have gotten footage. From Ninety percent of the footage is from him. Yeah. And he probably got paid a good penny for his footage because yeah. he never actually got to make that reality TV show and sell it. 
Yeah. But he made it. Like he never got to sell it. He never got to sell it. So he's like, well, I've got all this footage. Do something with it. Do something with it. And this guy came in and I don't know if the people who made the documentary ever filmed Joe Exotic. Really? I didn't have that in mind while watching it to begin with. Um, but I don't think he, they did. I think that he went to jail and everything was captured by somebody else. Or the other thing is he just caught him right at the end when he found out that he could be going to jail. Mm. And you know, you're right, because there's very formal interviews with specific but people, not but not with him directly. There's there's interviews with um, the Everyone. staff who lost her arm or his yep. arm. Yep. Um, uh, there were interviews with a lot of people who worked there, but and and then God damn it. Carol and her husband, and then and then Everyone. the other guy who ran the zoo, and yeah, those are all after the fact. They're all after the because fact because yeah. they only have like one interview each. They're sitting in the same That's spot. That's true. That's the true. The whole film. Yeah, this is a documentary, and uh, yeah, I, I, I noticed <laughs> these things. all the video footage. Um, um, it is a crazy film, though. It's madness. Yeah. It's madness. It's madness. <laughs> yeah. It's... Like, it's being at the right place at the right time with the right footage. Yeah. Um, and kudos to them. Yeah. For doing that. It's probably one of the most successful documentaries ever now. Yeah. Or getting very close to it. Yeah. Um, in terms of exposure, that's pretty much the only film in Facebook that anybody is talking about. Yeah. That's it. I don't hear anybody talk about any other TV show or movie. Well, just not to the same extent. Yeah, not the same yeah. extent. Ah! Yeah. Damn it. The D train said, I thought that Rick Kirkman lost all his film. It did say that it went up in flames. I know, but a lot of it survived. I, it must, he must have, some of it must have been there. And yeah. Some of it he had off uh, somewhere else. It must have been like. Yeah. The re a lot of the reality show because some of it's still there. It's in. It's in there. Yeah. Um, he did. He did have certain certain scenes that were from the reality show. So he must have had something. Like he put them to like maybe the originals were in there. Yeah. And he had put some of the episodes together, and they're taking it from the episodes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, good night, S. Ramirez. <laughs> night, S. Ramirez. Yeah. Night, Spice Bar too. Yeah. And. He, and uh, he says, congrats on getting patch. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I'd like yeah. to get the bigger patch. Oh, yeah, the part where he flees would probably have to be theirs. Uh, flees. What? Oh, flees his zoo towards the end? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think so. So I think they got him. Right towards the end. Right, right when the, the, the trial and everything was happening. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't remember what, who was in the opening shots when they're mm. showing the pictures of the tiger in the van. Like, who was it? Mm. Um, anyway, that's why. I'd have to watch it again. And then, yeah. then I'd be able to de definitively tell you. Yeah. Because you can tell between the types of footage and what it looks like. Because the filmmakers had really nice cameras and and are really good filmmakers. And also, looking it up, the director actually also directed two Nine Inch Nails videos. The director of the documentary? Yes. Really? Um, from the Broken uh, EP. Really? Damn it, I thought I rescued <laughs> myself there. Yeah, like really crazy videos. <laughs> really, really crazy videos. Oh, S. Ramirez is hanging around. He, just, he was just saying goodnight to us. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, it gets uh, confusing. The d train said, I thought they had been filming on and off for five years. That's kind of what they said as well. Yeah. But all the interviews were, were done in very, very were, specific places. We're done places. in one day. Like one, one off days. Yeah. It's like, we're going to And the filming not might not time. have been of Joe Exotic. I mean, they may have had that footage from a while back and, and then took five years to film the other people too, right? Like... Who That's knows? true. They could have come back. Yeah. It's like, oh, nothing's coming of this. But then Joe's in trouble. He's going to yeah. go to jail. Let's yeah. catch up really quick with Joe. Yeah. Film a bunch of stuff before his trial. Yeah. Dan ABC is on his way. He says goodnight. Good night, Dan. Yeah. We'll be. Uh... RC70 says the guy loved being on camera. I'm sure there were plenty of sources. Oh, for sure. It seemed like there were yeah. a lot of people who had filmed him. 
and it seemed yeah. like they were very friendly with the news reporters. Yes. They may have been able to get raw footage, footage. of yeah. Of the of the from the news, but yeah. usually news doesn't film a lot of stuff. When you yeah. get when you get uh, well, talk to the news because I've been interviewed a number of times, and it's like they barely get any footage. They get exactly yeah. pretty much what you see on the screen, and that's it. They don't mess around. <laughs> yeah, but it would be interesting to know how much they filmed there, how much yeah. was their footage, how much came from other people. If you look at the credits, mm. um, there were like. 20 to 25 camera people credited. Really? Yeah. So a lot of sources. Wow. Over time. Mm. Or a rotating cameraman. And they don't say who... Did what. Who was with who and did what. Yeah. Signing off too. All right. Have a good night, I think night, I'm going to stop too. My uh, You're getting, scores getting blurry. are not... Yeah, I know. They're not increasing. <laughs> <You're> going <laughs> down. Point. What time is it? 8.30. 8.30. Yeah. That's so super it's fine. Super late. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the news people One feel more. more because the story was so crazy. It is crazy. Multiple but that visits. whole that whole culture in those states, like in Florida and the exotic pets, I was listening I was I think it was about Joe Exotic, but I remember listening to a podcast that I think was about him. Mm -hmm. Um and it was all true crime and it was all about whether or not he had sent someone to try and kill Carol and and so when when the documentary came out I was like oh this sounds really familiar because it was like a true crime podcast that and I, I didn't I didn't I don't think I, I listened to the whole thing but it was about him and it was about oh, the damn. attempt murder charge and all that yeah so I don't think the story was um it, it was obviously a pretty big story oh he's well known um, because they showed late night footage of him when he was running for president yeah and I remember those pictures cause yeah he's very distinct he's very distinct um, yeah, but that whole culture of big cat ownership and exotic oh, animal ownership is, is uh, definitely a bit terrible. strange. The private zoos and everything. It's crazy. Yeah. Especially how cheap. They had the number one takeaway from everyone is like, that's how much it costs to get a tiger? That's it? Yeah. That's so cheap. Madness. Oh, I remember seeing the episode of John Oliver where Joe was referenced. Yep, yep. Yeah. So we've watched all the Joe John Oliver. I don't remember that, but it must have been when okay. he was running for president. Done. Yeah. Done. 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 Amazing game. Seven yeah. two two four. I Yay. will return. Seven two two four. A pretty good score. Yes. Yeah, I think my highest was twenty seven. Yeah, you yeah, didn't make four. I didn't make four. So maybe we can come back to yeah. it. And I can try for eight and you can try for four. I can four. try for four. I don't need a separate patch. I just want to get the four. <laughs> Have you gotten a patch score on anything? Any of the Activision games? Yeah. I think you did. Yeah, on something. I have on a couple. I still feel like tire tracks I'm that close to. You are. So I have to go back to that. Very close but, to the uh, tire tracks one. It was getting, it was, again, you reach a certain point and you're like, I'm not getting better at this. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, that song will be stuck in uh, my yeah. head for days. Do 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 do. Yes, very very good game. Yeah. Only one patch. I need to work on the extra. Yeah, yeah. I know it's only one. It's like it's not a separate patch, but it's some bonus thing. Bonus. You know? Yeah, the bonus eight thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So what did we play today? We played uh, Jack and the Beanstalk, a very fun game, surprisingly it. fun. It seemed very simplistic to start, but I... And I, it got better and better and better. But I, I like how they incorporated the story into into the four levels, which was really great. Yeah. I think the best part was climbing the Beanstalk and climbing back down. Yeah, that's really interesting. It is. Really interesting. Really game creative. Yeah. Um, S Super Mario Sisters. Mm -hmm. um, very, very simple. <laughs> very simple. Not, not very long. Li not very long at all. So pretty easy to, to Almost win. Almost like a proof of concept. but. Uh, uh, yeah. It needed like, to be bigger. Um, not not, not the Super Mario, though. When the Super Mario gets bigger... It, there are 31 subscribers. Yes, there are. Yeah. Um, oh, I have my thing going in the background. That's not good. What? Thing? So I did a little plug-in. It shows where everybody's from. Oh, uh, oh, it's not cool. showing yet. No? Seven, well, U.S. and Canada. That's it. That's it, yeah. <laughs> um, but I have this little thing. It says 32 subscribers now. 
Oh, you counted them on the screen? Yeah, there's 31 and me. So it shows 32 on, on my total here. Yeah, lots of people subscribing. It's really, really yeah. wonderful. <laughs> uh really pack rat can i automatically qualify for <laughs> i don't know if there's a patch he just said there was a bonus no, there is a patch is there and then there's for a the bonus AK. on top of that the bonus is the ak um yeah. as Ramirez, yeah you qualify he's already referenced you yeah <laughs> as qualifying <laughs> yeah um so yes yeah uh so and we played oh, we didn't play cosmic avenger we moved a ship around and that looked really good yeah, so yeah, looking yeah, forward yeah. to that eventually and Spaceman Explorer, which is super fun. And I got the patch. Yep. And I want the bonus, so I want to <laughs> return to that. I will return and try and get that bonus. Mm. So don't send it yet. Because <laughs> you have my address. Uh, uh. So don't send it. Uh, so next episode, which is going to be Sunday mm -hmm. at 11 a.m. So, so we're, we're not be, doing a Friday then? No. It's so okay. going to be Wednesdays and Sundays okay. for everybody um, who wants to know when we're on next sunday at 11 a.m pacific time 2 p.m eastern 6 p.m gmt and we'll be playing kaboom deluxe from daryl spice jr that's a two-player game paddle mm -hmm. and uh playing flappy bird <laughs> so have lots of practice nice <laughs> with this uh and we'll be playing a game called space battle and i need one more game i think to fill in there okay so i'll be looking out for that mm -hmm. And then on next Wednesday, we're going to be playing Duck Attack. Duck Attack, okay. Yeah, which I've seen and read a lot about, but I've never played it. Mm. Um, that did get a re released on cartridge, so I'm hoping the one on, that's available on the internet is big enough that we can play it cool. all the way through. Cool, cool. Uh, and then nothing planned until May 13th, where we play Champ Games Secret New Homebrew. Ooh that nobody knows well some people might know people worked on graphics and yeah well of sound they'll yeah. know yeah um but they should not talk um, should not talk do not release. and i don't know what it is either so that's going to be fun do not release sensitive information early credit touch quit touching touch. and that's going to be on a wednesday and it's going to be a 6 p.m mm. show and so we're looking forward to that. And mm -hmm. the secret homebrew is not Gorf. Mm -hmm. No, it is not because everybody knows about Gorf. Mm -hmm. So it is not a homebrew that has been announced. Okay. That has been named. Or that's been Excuse confirmed me. at least. Okay. At least anyway. Okay. Because it may have been one that's been a rumor or something. Okay. But he's never he hasn't confirmed. Nothing it. is confirmed. Okay. Yeah, Gorf will we will be playing probably okay. before that. Oh, okay. Um, because that one is almost done. Um, but he probably, I want to probably get the Quadtari before that. Okay. Um, it's not essential for Gorf because that's only one player at a time, unless he does something special like, um, mm. like he did for Galagon. Um, but the Quadtari's definitely would be needed for the baseball. Okay. But he's just kind of started that okay. right now. So I think there's enough time to get it. <laughs> and then he drops another one uh, that no one, he... I love how John debuts a game he's working on. <laughs> then he drops another one that no one knew he, he was, was working. working on. Yeah, exactly. That's how he uh, does. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's just got, he's really fast. He yeah. really knows how to program. Yeah. And he enjoys he, it, obviously. He enjoys it. He has enough yeah. time to do it. And he just understands the technology mm. so well. And he's able to build on things he's already built, mm. made. And a lot of the games before, he's actually taking, and not taking, um, programming he's done for... Um, DOS games that he made a long time ago mm. and incorporating those but not some of the newer stuff that's mm. all that's all new can't wait to see Gorf too so yeah mm -hmm. I'll have to practice on Gorf I'm pretty sure we have it on one like one of the compilations for PlayStation or Xbox mm. so I'll have to play that um, cool so thanks everybody for tuning in that's it for today uh, mm -hmm. thank you to S Ramirez 2008 the D train 37 pack rat VG uh, for Spaceman Splor mm -hmm. uh, Splorf, mm -hmm. and we'll be playing that again. Um, and I suppose to thank you very yes. much for tuning in. Uh, RC7E, Cafe Man 2D, Dan AVC, uh, Spiceware, Mr. Fix, uh, Scrolling, Scro oh, Gretums, yeah, Carl G. Who, who just else? shouted, thanks for another entertaining evening. You're very welcome, Grams. <laughs> Metal Lunar uh, 7. Yeah. Carl uh, G. Carl G. Kev Kelly. Kev Kelly popped in there. Yeah. 
Uh, I think I got everybody. Yeah, or close to them all. Spice Take care there. was fun. Yes, it was fun. I always yeah. like going for patches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a goal. You well, and you you can play it sustained for a little longer if you're trying to show yes. off a bunch of games. You want to kind of yeah. squish them in, but yeah, and I always end on nice the patch because you don't know yeah. how long that's going to take. And, yeah, yeah, and whether people care, <laughs> so they can just trail <laughs> off and watch yeah. me try and get the patch or not. Mm -hmm. That was ac Oh, it is looks accidental. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you don't. She she must not. Uh, you must not touch type then. Why? Because if you touch type, you're looking at the screen. Yeah. If you're yeah, not, you're looking you're at the Sometimes you're doing keys. both. Sometimes you're doing both. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Maybe Gretams is very far away. I'm <laughs> just about a seven hours from here, so. Yeah. <laughs> Needs to shout a little bit. Yeah. Well, you always <laughs> complain that I shout at my mother over the phone. So. Oh my goodness! You're in all caps on the phone. <laughs> that's for sure. It's like we're shouting long distance. Yeah, it's far, yeah. so you got to shout. That's right. Um, so we're out of here for tonight. Yes. Uh, not Friday. We'll be back on Sunday, yes. 11 a.m. And we will see you there. Yes. So thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone.